something in the oven in the why well, are you cooking craig what's in the oven right i've got empire pie. Dubai, yeah. empire pie an old classic empire pie. yeah i've got a classic for tonight because it's kind of like we're on it tonight we're on well, it somebody say what it is what we are and who we watch it we are the ideal home show it's thursday nine o'clock you're watching us on youtube.com or on um, the homepage.com forward slash live. Nowhere else. else. Nowhere else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, oh, fellas, man. fellas, fellas, how are we doing? Are we all all right? Very well. It's a secret. Yeah. <laughs> Where's Craig gone? Look, he's buggered off already. Is he... It's that Empire Pie. It's ready. Oh, Empire Pie time. Okay. Pass A. Empire pie I've every other week. I've exactly right, Luke. This is the first helping of empire pie that I've got. That's, that's, that wouldn't feed a small child, eh? What's that little... no, I've, got, I've got loads more in there. I'm just getting a little bit. I don't like to pile it all on and then, you know. It, that to... actually looked like a dog shit on camera. <laughs> it really yeah. did. It just yeah. looked like that needed put it in a bag and throw it in a red bin. And have we got, have we got a hardware announcement to make before you take that mouthful, Craig? Yeah, I've got, I've got a new computer. Look. He's in glorious look HD. Look. look at the quality of those curtains now, bitches. Oh, look at that. Look at them. Yeah, look. Cool. I mean, um, let's see if we can zoom in. We'll zoom in on the curtains. Hold on a minute. Oh, show Someone us, in show. chat just put, what does Craig look like? That's all. <laughs> <laughs> look oh, at those curtains. We can really see it. Stay on that, actually. You could stay on the curtains for the, most of the show. The show. Oh. <laughs> 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 Looks a bit like Rory McGrath, that fella. Yeah, Matt Fox went with, wow, Craig looks weird. <laughs> Robbo kindly went with, puts your ears on him. Yeah. <laughs> it does HD, though, doesn't it? Gee, she yeah. and Leaper went with, oh, my God, does Gary really look like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he really looks green and flowery. I watched Corey until it went HD. Can't do with Deirdre Barlow now in HD. Oh, well, Diddery. She's terrible, isn't she? She's dead, isn't she? Oh, Diddery. Yeah, yeah. Chris, but they're keeping her on the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dead they, they, put, they put her in state in the Rovers. It's not CGI <laughs> like Star Wars. It's it's just her, her corpse. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, should we crack on? We've got a serious serious thing to go yeah. on to tonight, but before that, we do a, we'll do our hand checks what we're vaping on um you know what i'm having for tea so i may as well go first really aren't I? Well, go on then craig go on. get out of the way so you can chow so you can chow down yeah i can get a fresh cup as well um right i've hardly got anything i've got the e-fusion look you can do it in a high look it's good in high resonant you can see stuff and i've got a light up there you can see that's what i've got oh you've got um, electric light in that flat now yeah i have yeah <laughs> off my look where is it <laughs> he's, he's wired it to street lamp yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm stealing from next door um yeah so i've got the tobacco super tank mini on top of that on top of the effusion which is really good running at 75 watts i think where, like where have you pulled that effusion from i've had this for you for, for ages since it first came out i've got that many mods you don't just don't see most of the rotation you've, ne you've never you've never hand checked that at the start of a show i've been on you know I've got that that many that just lying. It's like this one earlier that I just picked up. I've got an, an OKR that I just had lying around in the back. Just that one of my mates built. It's yeah. got so many mods I didn't even use them. Can't be asked. I know, just that many of them. So, um, so I've got that, and in that I've got uh, the, I've got about halfway down that Cornish liquids um, relooped. It's all right, but I'm 
175 watts, I think it takes all that. Um, the, other, the other things I've been using this week, I've been using the Nigel SVB, nice yellow, orange, and black thing, with the origin on top. And in that, I have got fluff from DB Liquids, available at justadnick.co.uk. <laughs> Which fluff is that, Craig? This is strawberry and peach. So oh, this, you mixed it yourself, didn't you, that one? Yeah, you got two and mixed it, didn't you? Yeah, I got a 120 ml bottle and I stuck 10 of, 10 of strawberry and 10 of peach in, uh, five mils of Nick, and then filled the rest up with Fiji and give it a good shake. It's really good. Yeah, really good. Fluff, that fluff is really good straight away, isn't it? It's almost instantly. Yeah. yeah, really liking that. Um, and the other thing that I got was uh, this week, and I've got, again, I've got strawberry fluff. That's all I've got left out of that bottle now. I'm down to that. Um, and I've got the goon with, oh, we was it who did the tip again, Rick? It's Steve in Maidstone, and Tony mm. sold it to you. Yeah, so, Ooh. yeah, that one. On the goo, and I've got that on the uh, Loch Ness by Envy. So I have uh, I have got one of those now. Mm. Mm. It's quite a pretty little one. Um, yeah, I really like it. And I, really, I actually, it's one of those mods that you, I wanted to like. And initially, initially, I had a really, really bad problem, which was the delay when you fired it. It, kind of, it did that thing that used to happen in the early 2015 where you'd hit the button and you'd sit there and you'd wait and then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, it's going. And then you'd kind of take a bait. Um, but I've updated it since. There's been a firmware update for it and uh, that's taken, I mean, it's taken a, a large chunk of that delay away. Still a tiny little bit of a delay when you go from being powered off to firing. But I think quite a few mods are a bit like that anyway. Um, but other than that, really, really good. It's... 150 watts dual battery uh, somewhere underneath there. It's quite There's a good two. size for two batteries, actually, isn't it? Yeah, for two batteries, really good. I mean, if you take the, uh, you know, what, what I've got right around. Well, I'm still getting a bit of an echo from you, Craig. You get an echo from me? Odor. Mm -hmm. Odor. It's Odor. Odor. Is it me? Yeah. yeah. I'm echoing. I'll have to. Re I'll refresh. You're not minute. echoing, and we all are, which means it's you. It's me, right? Anyway, I'll do this dead quick. Hexo versus the uh, what mess? Yeah, same as a G size box then, really. Yep. Yeah, that's so. It's oh, pretty much the same size as the Duke. So, uh, has, has it made you want the fancy one? <laughs> I'd, I'd still have the fancy one, but I wouldn't pay three thousand. You know, where I have much it is now for for one of those. If you wanted to get older one. So that's all. You'd get, I mean, you can get one RRP, but you know it involves lists and knowing the right person, all that kind of stuff. And I'm not really a big X1, you know, kind of Damien kind of dick riding fan. So um, <laughs> yeah, so, sorry, Damien. Um, yeah, it's re I, re I really quite like it. It's really really comfortable. It's got that coating, that nice rubberized coating on it. Um, it's pretty sturdy. The battery cap on the bottom, I think, just needs a little bit of a tweak on it. But other than that, buttons are fine. It's not got tack switches. It's got nice little mill buttons on the front. Um, the only, only other bit that's really, really good on this is you can change the uh, you can change the 510, so you can have a recessed 510 or a flat 510. Very so, it, so the Atti sits down in, inside the mark. Um Yeah, well, it's good. And for got a ghost echo, because it's gone now. Okay. Yeah, sort itself out. Well, yeah, it was, I think, about 70 quid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> but, yeah, so they're about they're about 70 quid, I think, it, um, but they're not available over in the UK yet. So, But I got this one from Mark White, so I'd like to say a big thank you to Mark White. Last thing. He sent over one of these, which is... Oh, I need to ones. print one of those. I want one of those. Yeah, a battery stack thing where you, you know, last in for... your battery's better, yeah. yeah. One of them. And he sent me a little case um, for some 18650s. So, a little case for the top cap. Lovely. So, so I'd just like to say thank you very much to my wife. So. Yeah, anyway, next I'm going to say John... That was me. What was that for dinner? What was that for dinner? I just had potato wedges and a dip. 
And then an apple pie with custard. I tell you, wedges and a dick. Then a dick, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always like to get some dick. One oh, dick. dick. <laughs> I don't know. I'd use the dick wait. as a break water between me slices and me beans. <laughs> That's what I have for dinner. Uh, busy week, busy week, because I'm sort of finishing my current job. So sort of trying to tie up loose ends and stuff like that. Knackered. Um, but what am I vaping on? I've got, I'm looking on the floor because I knocked shit over, right? Um, I've got a billet box, uh, with a red four in it, and I've got a funky a little liquid, um, from Smoking Skulls, it's called Sinister. Oh. Oh, which is uh, it was very, very kindly sent to me by Andy Brown. Um, it's it's a very, very sharp lemonade, um, but it's slightly sweet as well. It's, it's really, really nice, and it goes really, really well with a beer, actually. Um, yeah, I've been enjoying that. My Andy sent that to me, and it arrived uh, a couple of days ago, uh, and uh. Yeah, I'm already kind of getting an, into it. Um, very sour, but very, very nice lemonade. Like handmade, like if you bought lemonade in a shop, like a posh shop, and it was slightly misty, and in a bottle with one of those things. You, go. you mean with real lemons? Real lemons, one of them. That's one. Um, I have got a Vapor Giant Nano. <coughs> On top of the, I've read that so many times and everybody commented it. Uh, on top of Blackest Flask. Um, it's Brass Beam Mint, Baby Giant Nano, Flask. Everyone sees it every week. Uh. <laughs> I'm getting low. I've got about 240 mils left. Brass Beam Mint. Oh dear. I live. Um, and a quick mention brought to Bryn. Um, for sending me some woo wa cigar concentrate that he made up for me because I'm I'm an idiot when it comes to mixing stuff. So he sent me um, some samples, not samples, so I can make up like 100 mil bottles or 50 mil bottles with um, uh, woo wa cigar concentrate, which is lovely. You he sent me some as well. Hey, you've already hey. made it up. I've made it up. Okay. Yeah. How big is the bottle? It's, that's a hundred mil bottle. Ah, perfect. So I can do a hundred mil. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, I want to give a quick shout out uh, to Ronnie Douglas because I sent him some uh, neinals because he made me laugh um, last week. And uh, when I asked for his address, uh, I he sent me his address and he'd actually messaged me before, um, but and I missed the message. He sent me in April last year. Sorry, <laughs> sometimes I get loads and loads and loads of messages, and I just didn't see it at all. Uh, and, uh, and and that made me laugh as well. But so I thought I'd say he sent this to me last year. But it's just just a funny thing to say. Um, my four year old son was asking me what I was watching a minute ago when he was watching the Ideal Home Show. Um, so his, his son asked him what he was watching. He said the Ideal Home Show, and his reply was. <laughs> That it was Gandalf and started pointing at Rick. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you shall no. not pass. <laughs> Play that to your son. There you go, Ronnie. Thank you very much for watching. <coughs> Richard, what did you have for dinner? Probably nothing. And how has your week been? So you have to ask Richard what he had for lunch, not for dinner. Would you have for, would you have for lunch rice? And um, what, yes. how is your week? <laughs> Um, yeah, for lunch I had a packet of um, Tilda um, coconut coconut oh, boiled oh, rice. That's one of your favourites. Yeah, no, switching your game up. I put a little bit of soy on it. Lovely. Just I, I had sushi, so we were close. Yeah, yeah. I just really want, even though I'm not smoking, still quite keen to get cancer. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you just, get that from soy sauce. Yeah, apparently. Oh, excellent. I just burnt toast as well, apparently. 
this burnt thing has been <laughs> coming out every couple of years for about a decade. Yeah. Yeah. No one cares. It's silly, isn't it? I mean, years ago they were feeding kids coal. Yeah, they didn't, you know. <laughs> yeah, and where are they now? Yeah, they're alive still. <laughs> you know. It's north. Yeah, fair play. Um, yeah, tea and I don't for my dinner yet. <clears throat> um, week, good week, good week, not bad. Um, Sarah, Sarah got a bump in the car, but um, oh. no, no, no great, no great drama. You're right. Yeah, she's fine. She's fine. Kids fine. They were a little bit upset at first, but life goes on. Um, vaping on a plethora of things um vape droid uh c2d1 oh i got it right and everything R2D2. yeah this is the um kidney shaped mod follow-up <laughs> <laughs> uh from vape droid the disappointing um, this, with the follow-up <laughs> <laughs> the difficult second album <laughs> yeah <laughs> um it's a yeah very interesting shape dna 250 though it's quite great nice. Oh, it's great that it takes the uh, thing. It's just the 510, the button, <laughs> screen. <laughs> Apart from that, it's brilliant. I haven't had any trouble with 510. Um, it's just in the, the middle, which is weird. The button is, for want of a better word, soggy. So it's got a sog, mm. soggy... It's no, it's no... It doesn't push back at you when you push it. Oh, that sounds to me like it's using the standard onboard tactile, which aren't really clicky and they're quite small. And they've got a big lump yeah. actuator there pushing onto it. Mm. So they um, maybe should yeah. put a whole new button on for the fire switch, I think. Uh, oh, is he frozen? Uh, 18650s. Oh, you say that again, Richard, you sort of went... Bleh. Oh, sorry. Uh, so the um, apparently on the DNA two hundred and fifty, they've improved the way it behaves with eighteen six fifties. Oh, okay. Because the two hundred was specifically lipos in their brain at the time. Wow. Uh, so that's so that's quite interesting. It is it is doing really well, it's performing really well. Um, in terms of holding it, I think it is like uh, you just put your thumb in the groove at the back, really. Um, but it's a bit weird that you've got your hands on the screen, your fingers on the screen. Oh. That. Other than that, it's other than that, it's ignoring the groove altogether and cheeky thumb across the, which makes it even bigger. Really, if you do, it's a bit or feel yeah. bigger. <clears throat> on to, on top of that, I've got the Hurricane Junior, which I'm loving. Um, oh. If if anyone just had a Hurricane and thought, I wish it had a bit more air, then that's what this is. Has that got that's an perfect. SD card? Has that got an SD card slot in it? <laughs> It looks like there's an SD card slot. I'm telling you, you there, you go. there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can do. You can download your photos with it. <laughs> I don't. I can't decide if they're for style or for venting. Let's I'm find sure. out. <laughs> we'll find <laughs> out. Later. You might. You might do something else as well. Yeah, we'll, we'll. Well, we'll. We'll make it blow up in tech time. <laughs> <laughs> It's not a mech. Hurricane Junior, genuinely my favourite RTA ever. Awesome. Um, uh, well, I'll change next week. Yeah. Uh, but but you know, I really, really like it. Uh, next, uh, brand new from Motofo, the Lush. The Lush RDA. Yeah. I think it. Well, it's the 24 mil RDA. It might be their first. I think that is actually a cracking RDA. Looking at the deck on that and having the underflow air, under coil airflow on it this time as well. Yes, so it's got it's under coil um, and it's uh, flathead screws, um, and it's it's off on a sort of weird angle. So it's kind of does really allow you to not have to mess with your leads. Um, I think that's the thinking behind it. Um, yeah. The flatheads, though, they, it's quite tricky to get them really tight. Um, to, you know, to get a really nice connection. Um, but uh, I'm, I've just about managed it, I think. The other thing is, because of this crazy Dex design, it doesn't leave a lot of room for cotton and juice. Which, on an RDA where you've got to keep removing the cap because it's got the undercoil. I don't know. It's it feels like a a four vapes and take the cap off every time. You know, I don't know. Mm. But the, the flavour's very nice, and I think it's very nice looking. 
It does look sweet. I like the look of that. Is that me so, frozen or no? This is frozen again. Right. <laughs> he'll go. He'll catch up all of a sudden. He'll go. Wait, 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 wait. Anyway, <laughs> Ricky, if you're talking right now, you're very, very still. It's very. <laughs> anyway, what should I should I carry on or? Yeah. Carry on. Yeah, oh, what's yeah. happened? Carry on. So, yeah, what have I been... What do you want to know? What do you want to know, John? How, what, what, what did you have for dinner tonight, and how has your week been? Rich? Tonight for dinner, I had nachos, because we had leftover chilli that I made yesterday. Oh, lovely nachos and chilli, nothing wrong with nice that. Nice nachos, some cheese, everything, really quite easy. Microwave it up and... Oh. You have to be careful. You keep saying night in Spanish, not crisps. It's nachos at night and yeah. Ah. Is it? Oh. yeah. So buenos nachos. That's nachos, nachos is actually, night. isn't it? Yeah. Nachos. That's an O, not an A. Yeah, all right. I did Spanish in, in university. <laughs> you can say buenos tetas. That means yeah. good tits. Does it? Oh, I remember that one. <laughs> oh, oh Richard. Gone. Gone. Anyway, right. Well, yeah. It's a uh, week. What's yeah. the week been like? Week's been good, except I'm running out of stock. Um. Because I've got no five tens, no five tens. Come on, China! Get Everyone's me. asking me about when are you getting fat daddy vapes. I'm not. Don't know when. I don't know. They know what I need, and I'm waiting to hear back. I'm waiting for them to send it. I know Dennis is home now, so they're looking after him at home. Hopefully, he'll start cracking the whip soon, and I'll get some stock, and everyone can be happy again. Um, but no, all good though. All good at work. What am I vaping on right tonight? I'm vaping on. This little thing, this oh. little baby, that is my prototype, and it sits in the hand so nicely. It's lovely. Um, and the goon on that with, I've got a mixture of juices. I'll just say them in a minute while I'm vaping because I don't, I'm not precious about keeping the flavours the same. I'll just chuck in whatever's at nearest and cocktail them up. That's what I do. Hey. Hey. Hello. Oh, bitch is back. Hello. Um, I don't know what happened got, there. <laughs> You just kind of went, you, had, you were like this, you got an atty across your face like that. And then you went pop. Uh, I guess that was the troll, RTA. It trolled you. Have we moved on? Since you held up the troll and went like that, how many reviews of your gear did you actually do? In that <laughs> <laughs> it was weird, yeah, because everyone just went really quiet. <laughs> <laughs> like you were really interested. So Carry on, you. Richard. Go on, go on. You finish what you were doing, mate. <laughs> right. Okay, so lastly, the, I've got the Troll RTA um, from the Tovo. Uh, again, it's got like that GTA like gap there, gap underneath the, uh, underneath the deck. Auto. Yeah, so it's, it's quite cool. I like Grand Theft Auto. It's a good game, mate. Really good. Uh, I'm really enjoying that. Really nice flavour. Uh, so, uh, uh, Rick, did did we go in your direction after me? Yeah, I sort of just quickly, as I said, I'm vaping on my new prototype. It's in the hand like that, and it's really nice. And on that, I've got the Goon 24 with cocktail of juices so I'm just putting in. I'll take the same in a minute. All right, so I've got a new cap this week. Oh, I, I, it's not new, second hand. I bought the AV last week, second hand, and it came with this... Comp Life Battle Cap S. So I'm down with the kids. I've got this battle. I've got a battle cap. I can blow clouds, bro. Um, but in all honesty, it's really flavoursome. It's a really thick cap. Might be 24 mil or 25. I don't know, 24 or 25. But it's super thick, the walls on the cap. So you have to buy a separate deck for it, which I got from Cloud, some CCC. It was that Cloud Chase. What's CCC? Oh, CCI, you mean? Cloud Chasing Corporation. I don't know what it is. CCC. CCC 2 deck. Um, oh, CCI one? Is that the guy in the state? CC, it's CCC. It's three Cs. It's two, oh. There's two different places. Ah, okay. I've got, got this from Knucklehead Vapes. Um, they had only 25 quid for the cap, for the uh, for the base. Um, so I chucked that in there. And because of the reduced chamber size, it's it's cloudy and super tasty. It really has got good flavour because of the reduced chamber size. So I'm loving that. And in that, I'm vaping fluff, strawberry fluff. 
Um, and in the other one, I've got a mixture of sweet Jesus juice, still liking that. Um, it's like a minty toffee. Um, mm. That's number three. That's the Holy Ghost from Prohibition Vapes. Um, and yeah, still having a little taste here and there of vape swag, bamfer milk, and Billy Jean is not my lover. Uh, slime. <laughs> Billy King. Not yeah, my, Billy King. Me. And Voodoo Brew. So yeah, I'm not. I'm mixing and matching, and uh, <laughs> that is what I'm vaping on. I just remembered. I completely forgot to hand check something, which is because I was just about to use it. Um, which is the RX two hundred with the. Uh, Merlin Mini, and um, this is revision three of Cactus Punch, and I've mm. nicked it up now, so it's 12 milligrams. I've thought it's better than mine, it's really yeah. good. That's really good, and it mine's gone. That's how it is. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's good. certainly a different, it's different, isn't it? It's, it's a different juice. I've got it's it in an orange, I've got it at 12 milligram. Mm. I've got it in an Origeny as well, and it's normally a bit of a sign that I like it if it goes in an Origeny. So, yeah. Anyway, news. Let's do some news. Let's do some news. Done, oh, yeah, I've done Craig's hand set. Yeah. Are we, yeah. Are we going with the script with the news? Yeah, we'll go with the script. Go on, then. It's pretty quick. Uh, yeah, it is, actually. I've only got two things. Um, which the bastard announced it already in chat, but I will tell everybody. In Catartus. Uh, who always watches the show has a new job in the vaping industry. Um, I saw him post it on uh, Insta Spam earlier, and I just wanted to say congratulations! Yay! Yay! Yay. Well done, mate. Good stuff. Um, the second thing I wanted to say was a coming soon to you, just add nick.co.uk. Um, we're all sorted, uh, and it will be coming shortly. We have uh, the uh, <clears throat> the Ice Cream Man, which has been spoken about on the show a few times. Uh, met Russell at Vape Fest, and he gave us all samples, and Richard had some recently. And, uh, yes, just that nick.co.uk will be stocking the Ice Cream Man shortly. So, coming soon, the Ice Cream Man. That was that. I'm talking about just that Nick Dog, code at UK. Uh, I ran a competition last week where I asked people to make up uh, a logo. And well, the in the if you initially in the first prize was two kits from just that Nick, that still stands. Second prize was his and hers Lynx gift sets. Ah, oh, amazing. Fucking and awesome. third prize is going to be some neinals because I added a third prize. Uh, Rick, have you downloaded the images? If you did the third first, you, you're muted, by the way, Rick. Yes, I, I have. actually, I, I do. I didn't do. I didn't actually put the fucking names there. So uh, let me just work out. What so what one are we going with first? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me uh, the third, third first. But hold on one second while I actually. Get a brain and actually um, <laughs> find the people who did them. What a oh, God. I know that is embarrassing, isn't it? Oh, dear. That is that is working with a twat. Put like them me. up there and go. Whoever did that, come and get Let's a try. Anyway, come no, on. No, I know, I know the last, I know the last two. I just took the first one, which is quite good. Well, I, think first, it's, in I think third it's, it's Chris Durkin, just because it made me laugh. I think Nick that's a cotton. I think you should use that definitely. <laughs> Nick <laughs> Cotton from East End has just had Nick. Thank you, Chris. All right, Ma. Um, <laughs> it's more it's more like all right, Ma. Ma. All right, Ma. All right, Ma. Ma. Send Got me your mate. address, Chris, and I will send you some neinals. I think he's watching with wine this evening. Oh. Uh, in second is the winner of the uh, of the sexy um thing we did what was it the face of ios mm. which is gus dav morton just of the welsh fella gus oh, yeah. of the welsh, welsh gus welsh gus, gus. Welsh gus. Welsh gus. Really, really really him. like that well, that I'm was gus. winning that was winning for, for a while really i'm winning. sure that that, that was that was our favorite one that just had nick and I the think winner the the neinals are going oh, well, oh well, they obviously obviously you're going to get some the neinals yeah, Gus, but you're also going to get his and hers, the link sets. 
<laughs> in chat, he just wrote, fuck you. I don't want fucking links. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner was, I really, I don't know how to say, say this. J O A with a little squiggle on top. Oh. Jow. Jow Cavaco. Who, if you put up the number, the, the winner. It's fucking good. It's good, yeah, really great. As soon as I saw this one, it was like, yeah, that's pro. That's yeah, pro. we're not actually, we're not actually going to use it on the site, but um, we're we going. Uh, I'm going to have a word with you. Uh, maybe sort out something else. Uh, I just, I just want a tiny change to it, but it was our favourite one. And you've won two kits from just at nick.co.uk. So if you, I'll comment on the thread and but uh, just so you know, you've won as well. And pick two kits and give me your address, and we'll send them out to you. Yeah. Well, just that next okay, good. Really very, good. very, very good. Good stuff. Yes, really, it was good fun. Thank yeah. you for playing. Everybody played and everybody took the piss as well. It was very funny. I liked it a lot. And uh, that was that. The news. Richard. What have you got in the news? Uh, nothing. Nothing at all. Uh, I was going to use this as an opportunity to apologise to Gus for calling him Welsh. <laughs> That's it, isn't it? We agreed you should really apologise <laughs> to the Welsh for calling Gus Welsh. Yeah, I should probably just. I think I even commented apologies all round. Um, so yeah, apology, apologies all round uh, for that. Um, thank you to Bryn. I know John said it, but thank you to Bryn for the Wu Wah cigar. And um, there is actually a recipe on the Facebook group for Wu Wah cigar. Yeah. In the files, yeah. And it's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. And um, very self-serving. Uh, I put a vlog up yesterday. Um, and for those that don't know, even if you're not that interested in the channel, um, <laughs> with, every, with, with every vlog comes a giveaway. So <laughs> skip to half an hour and... Uh, Go watch feel, him. They're good. Feel, feel Go free, watch him. Feel, feel free watch to enter a giveaway. Uh, yeah, because there's a giveaway every... So there's, uh, there's a giveaway open currently on the channel. You just you massively just increased your subscriber count there. Yeah. <laughs> <By> three. <laughs> yeah. Which is, just type in B1CK on YouTube. That's what you need to type. And it yes. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that's that's me. Uh, Craig, what have you got? Right. Uh, just to say, I will send out the Gustav Frey Pete, John Frey, and uh, Ollie won the face of iOS. Now, they, they can get these vinyls anytime they bloody well like. They know they can. So I'm going to pick three other people instead of the whole of that. <laughs> I'm just going to pick three other people that wouldn't normally kind of get these things. Dead. Oh, well, do you have to explain that? You just, we've, we've known them all. For, we've known yeah. all three of them for... Ages. I've known Freight for two years, known Ollie for about three, known Gus for at least two. Yeah, so we, we do know them already yeah. and they're friends. So it doesn't, yeah, so Craig's not just being a wanker. You can no. just get them, just messages. Well, I am, them well I am being a wanker. They're not getting them from me. You know, it's, <laughs> that's why I'm looking at it. But yeah, I'm going to find, there you go. It's on screen and signals. Um, yeah, it's kind of, um, I'll pick three. Um, the other thing is as well, I put a post up the other day, and I've just I've just remembered this, which was uh, Zach Marable, Maribel, or I think it is from Moderation Vapes. He's got a channel. Um, about five months ago, his house got flooded, and we did kind of a thing about his um, GoFundMe page to help his family. He'd got a kid who was seriously ill, and, and they were flooded out the house, and they were in real trouble with what was happening. And it, it all got sorted, and then... Um, the weekend just gone. He did his first review since all of the, all the problems that he had. So, uh, just want to say um, thank you to everybody that kind of helped and, and go and watch his videos. There's a link in the Facebook group, which is the Ideal Love Show on Facebook. Um, yeah, go check him out and leave him a thanks and uh, kind of a welcome back. I think that's the way. Um, Rick, what have I got? Oh yeah, I've got. I've just tiny quickly want to go through this. Quite excited about this. I mentioned the SX475. I don't know if it's got a J on the end. I can't remember now. SX475 board that we they've sent me samples, and I've got them here. So I just want to quickly show you them. Compared, this this is the this is the baby. 
I want to show you it compared to the S, the standard SX 350J. Yeah, that's what it is, isn't it? Can't keep up with the numbers. Um, but that's the 475. That's the. Oh, blind. Fuck yeah, that's a lot smaller. So you can see there's a. Um, hang on, let's present me. So. Uh, yeah, you can see there's a fair difference in size there. Um, and also, look, when I turn it over, that's the S the SX 350J. That's the 475. It's got that. It's got one of those tiny little inductors on the back. So it's. I think it's about 12 millimeters, if that. Wow. So, fair difference in thickness for the board as well so looking forward to getting those so yeah that's it really it yeah so that's my news nice right um, um, take a deep breath go and get Bye. your cups of tea go and get a cup of tea crack open another beer <laughs> yeah it's yeah. Yeah. got their boots on unless we're doing troll richard are we doing troll have you got it no if this time at the end, we'll somehow figure it out. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll lighten the mood, right? First of all, the, the, uh, I'm going to—I'll say this out loud because it's easiest way of communicating with Rick. Which is, have you sent Mooch the link? I have, yes. Excellent. Uh, okay, something... Mooch, if you're watching, come in, mate. Yeah, whenever you like. Whenever you like. Um, oh. Yeah, he'll be around. Um, right. Um, We've who's going to start? Who's going to start? Come on, who's going to say about it? What are we going to say? Come on. You want me to say about it? It was my I had a gripe, didn't I? Yes. Yeah, so say, yeah, say why as well. Yeah. We don't want to. We're not ones for. We're not ones for drama, and this isn't a <laughs> This isn't a drama thing we're talking about now. But something has put our nose at a joint, and it's misinformation really, and we want to highlight it because there's been a few instances of people who are who are supposedly high profile, uh, putting out misinformation. Um, so we want to not pull them up, we want to steer them in the right direction, I think. Um, and we'll go through it now. Let's go through it. Let's go through it, shall we? Right. The re I mean, yeah, the reason why we're doing it is, first of all, we got the kid, the guy, the guy who went and blew himself up in the face. That was the first, that was kind of the thing that started this whole thing off. Um, with it going viral, and it really did go viral. The second thing was um, a certain a video that Dave Dawn did. Um, yeah. And the, the third thing was uh, Vapors in Power thing that uh, appeared on that. I don't know if it was Vapors in Power, but it, uh, by association it was, because it was his own vlog, which he's done this previously before, which is, it, I don't care about saying this, it makes no difference. It, um, Fergus from Vapors in Power, the the winner of their election this year there was only one one runner so surprise surprise he won he um he you've ne <laughs> i'd be surprised if many of you have heard of him apart from oh my god look at what this bloke's written now i exchanged the word bloke for any swear word you can think of and you've probably been sent it um <clears throat> and fergus writes a vlog uh and he and he wrote a vlog about the dangers of mechs yeah, and uh, just last week. Just, just to add on to that, uh, Fergus is also the same person that called all vapors stingy. Yes. Not, yeah, not that buying. billion wives, that billion not wives thing. Yeah. 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 And yeah. this is this. He's a, supposedly. I the trouble I have with this is these people have have given themselves this role of our, as as our leaders in the fight to say vaping, and they're not though. They're not the, our leaders. Um, but they've given themselves these roles, and I think they should be a bit more responsible with the information they put out there. Yeah. Um, so what we're so what we're going to do is we're kind of going to we're going to try and cover everything in one go because we kind of we've watched a lot of videos that people have done, and some are really good, you know, like the or, or bits of them we've really enjoyed, like Nick doing his old inanimate objects, Grim Green, um, Matt doing a little bit of coverage on it as well, DJ LSB Vapes has done a bit of coverage on it as well. It's everybody's kind of touched on all of these various bits and we we thought we wanted to collect together all of them into one thing and also add some of the bits that were missed out of some of these because yeah. I, I, there are certain things which i think are quite surprising you know when we went through things we were quite surprised all of us were by um certain facts and we are calling them facts because they are you know we've done a little bit of research 
So. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's uh, it's something that I think I think they sh they all should have done before they continue on the Chinese whispers of this of this nonsense. Really, yeah, um, yeah. we've got to know who we're standing. You know who what vapors doing you know and how many there are and just basics such as that you know and okay well start off with your bit uh with your numbers bit then craig yeah well I've, i'm going to read it down because it kind yeah, of makes fine, 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 fine. um if we use a rough number of 2.5 million vapors in the uk using the 80 20 rule we'll say that eight we'll say that fifty thousand of them sorry five hundred thousand of them are hobbyist vapors that have branched into non cigarette devices i don't think that's unreasonable um, uh, of these, we'll say that half of them have used Max. Don't think that's unreasonable. Even if it, perhaps you know, even if the balance was shifted one way or the other slightly, we're still in the hundreds of thousands. But let's say our final number comes out at two hundred and fifty thousand people have used Max in the UK. For the sakes of discussion, that's what we're going to go with, which is going to be the five hundred k and the two hundred and fifty k of, of Max users that are out there. Now, I'll let I'll re 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 read this bit out because rick's kind of he's been watching what yeah. dave's been doing with his thing and yeah i mean we've got a link for it we can go you can go and watch it for yourself but basically mr dawn bless you mr dawn um he did this bit of a rant where he wasn't calling for them to be banned but he's calling for all these associations the vape associations that the shops join to to uh voluntary oh, what did he say i'm going to suggest i'll read it out he, he said i'm going to suggest that it would be a great idea if IVTA, ACETA, UKVIA and ECBA all say to their members it would be a good idea if we voluntar voluntarily withdrew all hybrids and mechs from general sale. We That's don't display them, we don't advertise them. Only people that know about them or really want them would come and ask for them. That's about nine shops in the UK affected right there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, first, firstly, I don't think there's many... Well, we, we, yeah, we'll get you. We'll, 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 we'll come to that. I was all, just of these, like, I, all of these things, all of these things we're going to say about. If anyone's got any more information and wants to share it with us and prove us wrong, we'll hold our hands up and say, "Absolutely, yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah, yeah. we're wrong about it." But I don't believe we are. Um, mm -hmm. But we don't think many people are members of those organisations anyway. No. Yeah, so, we'll, come, we'll kind of go through the the bits on it, but we just just roughly going and off the back of of all of that lot, you know, because the first thing is that we've got to ask how many how many Macs do we think are out there next which is um most Macs being used in the uk will be claimed devices i don't think that's no i think it's fine i think that's a fine thing to say um and they'll be sourced directly from china now they're, they're freely available to buy from companies such as fast tech and, and, and gear best so any user that's out there almost one of the it, it's amazing how quickly people pick up on, on the fact that these companies exist out there. You know, Fastex one of the first things that places that but there's lots of people who order five five mechs monthly or like a couple of mechs at least. You know, for what thirty dollars, they love them. So yeah, when I first started, I must have got through. I probably had about twenty twenty five mechs that came over when I very first started before I kind of changed what I was buying. But got fucking loads of the things because they they're so cheap. Like I think John was John was saying it's like four or five dollars for the very cheapest thing that you can buy on there you know so um, they, did, they do offers as well chinese new year they were doing offers they do offers all the time yeah. yeah so when you when you consider the fact that the direct sale method bypasses any uk-based regulatory bodies you know they're not going through being ams these are going through the post straight direct that's it there's nobody getting in the way of these things so um again if you use the 80 20 rule and we're at 200,000 clone mac users in the uk and if we say half of them are direct purchases um, then there are at least a hundred thousand clone mechs that skip the UK regulatory bodies out there. Now that's been very conservative, like John's pointed out, which and Rick as well, which which are there, these companies. There aren't that many companies in these bodies. You know, there are some, and there's some quite large ones. But there's a fuckload more companies out there, and there's eBay. There's all these other places where you've got people selling them. So the numbers are huge. So we don't know the numbers of B and M's that belong to IBIF to EC to. UK VIA and ECBA or other regulatory body, bodies, but let's say they have good penetration of 50% of the BNMs. Just, I mean, that's huge over what John and Rick have been saying. Um, under the yeah, I'd be surprised if 10%. That's what I thought. Yeah, so imagine that they, you know, under their influence, imagine if they succeeded in pushing Max out of the display cabinets 
you had the 50 percent that aren't under their air influence and you're 150,000 mechs deep in the uk as we speak that's a fucking lot of them already out there that have been used the other issue that sits on the back of this is the time for the regulation to come into effect and the current stock levels of max already in the UK vendors. Vendors are very unlikely to throw away what they perceive as... What are they going to do? Bury them outside? <laughs> they're into them. They're, they're, you know, if they've got max, they're, you know, if they're, if they're clone max, they've got, they've got a few dollars in them. If they're, if they're, if they're genuine max, let's be serious, most retailers want about and this is an arguable point because there's lots of different stuff, but let's just take a general rule in vape shops. People want about 50% margin, right? So if they're going to knock them out, if they're selling them for 60, they've got 30 quid in each one. What do they need to do? Get a wheelbarrow and throw them away. If suddenly, if Jamie Oliver said, oh, we should oh, we should stop eating chicken wings, the butcher's going to knock the price down. He's not going to dig a hole in the back garden and throw them in. You're mental. All you're going to do is put them into especially, more people. Especially not on misinformation, because we haven't really highlighted what we're going to try Oh, yeah, and exactly. No, but I'm just hitting it point by point, yeah. It's just saying they're not. The crazy quite right. They're not. They're going to dump. They're going to knock. They, they might knock them 50% off to get them out of cost. But that you are now making it worse. Because if a guy, if you're saying that people shouldn't be buying them, then the people who were going to come in and buy a mod are going to go, wait there, bargain bucket, 20 quid. I'll have one of them then. Yeah, I'd be just, I mean, we'll ask Richard as well what his thoughts on this, but just very quickly, just to get chat going, which is a lot of people are typing in how many Macs they've got. I'd be very interested in just seeing, just as a consensus, how many how many people in chat have actually got in Macs. We should, yeah, you know. They're all filling, it, it, they're, they're filling up. We've got two zeros, but at the moment it reads 45175732111248. Yeah, 30. Yeah, but, somebody, but I mean, I don't know if we've highlighted it already, but we, the point we're making is they're, they're saying these things and they're saying that it's mechs that are causing these explosions. Rick, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We've got, so this is why we're saying it anyway. We'll get, to yeah, it. We, we'll get to all of that. We'll get to all of that. We've got to, if we don't follow this, we'll, we'll, we'll get lost. Okay. There's lots and lots of stuff. But so the bits were, which was, I mean, we'd be very interested in hearing from those actual, those um, organizations and, and, and bodies to to hear how many shops and people have actually got underneath them because it'd just be interesting to get a, a some idea a census of of what's going on with these things that and that these organizations should be open to being able to tell us how many shops have actually got under their control and how many shops they should state their members they should yeah. Robbo uh, in chat has just uh, sort of done a quick tally of what's come up in chat of who's got what 20 people about 250 max I've got at least 10 here. Yep. So, and I'm still alive. My face hasn't blown off. Fucking unlucky, yep. aren't I? We, still uh, there's another thing to point out. Um, yeah. Sorry, we're getting a little bit tangled up. Uh, as Richard just said, um, you know, we need to, you, you, you need to put out your figures. You need, the, you, these groups need to say how many members they've got. And, uh, and I just want to point out here that nobody, no shop is under any obligation to join one of these. I'm going to call them unions and advocate groups because I don't want to get involved in it. But I'm, I'm calling it, I'm saying that for illustrative purposes. I, I don't give a shit what you want to call it, but let's call it unions and advocate groups. Um, and, uh, and I know from people in the industry that I've spoken to who've been approached, but and we're not, I, I just want to say, we're not whitewashing everybody because there are groups that have not said anything about this issue. So I'm not saying this. If you stick your neck out, though, you, you are, you're open to abuse. If you've said something or claimed something, then we're, the ones we're named, people we're naming, we're, we're happily shoot down. So um, I know there are some groups who do some things that aren't, aren't detrimental. We, tonight we're just talking about these. Well, I just want to point out that to open a shop, you don't have to be a member of one of these groups. And the other thing that I've seen from uh, um, the vendors that I know, vendors and suppliers and BMs that I know, that they've asked when they've been approached, they've said, "What are you going to do for me? And what are you doing for vaping?" And their answer has always been so flimsy and fluffy. And they remember, this is somebody asking for your money. You know, they want a membership fee, a continued subscription. And these people say, well, what are you doing for me? Because if I'm paying you money, I want something for that money. And the answer is flim flam and bollocks. And so they don't join that. That's generally what happens. Uh, there's no way. 
there is no way on the planet Earth they've got over 50%. I, as Rick said, I'd be, I'd be incredibly shocked if they've got over 10% of uh, retailers in the UK are members of any one of those. Yeah. They're yeah. great. And, yeah. I'm just going to say you've opened yourself to what we're doing now. Yeah. You have. Absolutely. Now, the other bit, just going back to the original statement which Dave, Dave made, uh, which was um, the last line, which was only the people that know about them and really want them would come and ask for them. I have a real problem. This is This is like going back to the days of when somebody's got the you know the blue movies under the counter type stuff what it is it's black, it's black market isn't it speakeasy isn't it it is yeah and it, and it adds a level of suspicion you know we're, we're trying to get the whole vape industry and, and vaping as a whole we're trying to get it above board and accepted that kind of behavior is just ridiculous and then uh, if a user goes well actually i went and bought it from here what does the shop do then They've got, you know, they've got this additional level of kind of suspicion now inserted, which was, well, he, he reached under the counter and pulled out this mod, you know, and they don't have them on general sale. If all of that stuff starts coming out, it gets really shady for the shop. So that I, I'm really against that kind of thing. It's like you either sell stuff or you don't sell stuff. Yeah. That That's it, you know, and if you sell Max, advertise the fact that you sell Max, but don't, don't think you're kind of going to do all of this shady stuff. And how do you check? to see if somebody is a professional vapor, as Victor from I Smoke called it. What's the, how do you define this thing? It's, you, do you, okay, do you know Ohm's Law? How much Ohm's Law do you know? Do you know about this? Do you know about that? You, you, can, know about you can tell, you, I mean, you can have a chat with somebody, or we've already, we've said this in the past, b &Ms, they talk to their customers and go, oh, blah, 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 uh, what are you doing? I've, I, as I've said this before as well, I've stood in B&Ms and people have been using a mech and I've asked them what the build is and they don't know and I've, and I've um, I've meted it out on my mod, and if it's wrong, I've told them it's wrong and built something or helped them, and, that, and that's what good B and M's do. Yeah, but good B and M's will do that, won't they? I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I, I was in uh, Prohibition Vapes a few months back now, and somebody wanted to buy a noisy cricket, and they quizzed him, and they got him, even got him to this to sign something, um, but they did quiz him about whether he knew what he was doing. It was clear that he did. And and he managed to buy it, but they weren't just get, they weren't chucking them out and trying to sell them aggressively. They were like, you know, who are you? What do you do? What do you know? And uh, most, I'm sure, most shops would be conscientious like that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So the next section is uh, we've entitled we've entitled each one of these sections. By the way, it's quite cool. Uh, <laughs> where do you draw the line? Or as Martin Nymoller said. They came for the socialists. Um, well, personally, I, I think I think it's a bad thing to to get, to limit people's choice. I mean, what's next? If you start limit, if you say one device is no good, what's next? I mean, squonkers are mechs for a start. Generally, most of them are me mechanical. Um, we we joke around. Much. We joke around on the show all the time. There's four of us on here, and we've all got. The stuff the other people wouldn't use or don't interest you at all. I, I don't vape three milligram. I always vape twelve or eighteen or whatever. But why the fuck would you give a shit? You don't care. You vape three. Why the fuck would I care? You vape max. I don't. Well, I don't give a fuck. No. Yeah. Yeah. Richard. Richard, what are your thoughts on the matter? No, I think uh, I went mean, like we're going to get onto. We're going to we're going to explain why. It's, yeah. a, it's a nonsense argument in, in its in of itself. You know the the fact that they, there's just absolutely no need for a line. We're, we're going to explain that as well. But um, <clears throat> it's just not the it's just not the place to, to to limit choice. You know, limiting choice is it's just going li to ultimately limit uh, people's enthusiasm. It's uh, almost it's going to turn people off. You know, it's yeah. almost what the t t big tobacco is doing, limiting choice than wanting you to smoke to get your nicotine <laughs> one of the greatest inventions What's that? yeah it, 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 it's fucking bollocks that people are addicted to nicotine and they want it, 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 it this is <clears throat> now if there's a safety issue then maybe but we'll get to that in a minute <laughs> Fubaka. because it's my business to concern myself with other people's business that's why you suck for vaping 18 who's got who's got covered um, but on, on that whole thing, some, I'll, I'll add it onto the back of here, but earlier on today, Dave, um, Dave 
Dawn was doing some stuff with um, somewhere in Scandinavia to do with snus. And, but later in the day, he decided to tweet that the following, which is, in my mind, there is no conditional support for eSigs. If you don't support eSigs unconditionally, you don't support eSigs at all. <laughs> it's just laughable. I mean, well, so the, so the, he's, got, the, he's changed, he's turned around, you turn, as he, on what he said a week ago. Com yeah. Completely. It's, it, it's kind of like, well, well, what are you doing? It's kind of like, look, if you're going to have a message, stick to your fucking guns because that kind of wishy-washy bollocks. You're just going to get, if, we are going to run if, you over for it. If you were going to draw a line, how, how how would you draw it? Like, what about a mech with a fuse? Yeah. Let's how about let's, let's, let's just bring in a limit. Let's limit ourselves exactly as other people want us to. Like, we've all seen, do you, do you remember when the, um, we saw the draft regs come out? You know, when they were talking about uh, limiting uh, power and limit you know it doesn't it doesn't make any difference what are you on about yeah it's which will which will which will, we're going on to as well yeah. yeah okay so the next bit it says um who are these regulatory bodies and how much influence do they do they have which kind of goes back harks back a little bit to what we've done before which is now this is purely as a user but vapors in general have very little knowledge of them your vapor on the street might have read the net seen the name crop up in a multi-choice quiz in vapor Arm magazine but if people who already vape don't know them how can we be expected to help push new vapors to vendors who are regulated or know what their just, role is so that we I can just, i want to play a little bit of a game in chat just because we can see this oh, i won't make it up i'm quite happy what and these are mainly people in chat i'm not stupid most of the people we have in chat here vape all the time and they're on vaping things all the time so yeah. what i want you to do is write yes or no in chat if you know both dave dawn and fergus both of them you know exactly who they are not either one but both right yes or no that'd be great i'll, 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 I'll comment on that as it comes back. we'll have a follow-up we'll have a follow-up be interesting well. to know if they know one more <laughs> they might, you know, they might be aware of those two, but oh they, fuck me! If they uh, as it's come more. through on chat, there's not one yes yet. No, yeah. no, well, no, well, no. Yeah, well, either so, way. Kind of, so there's a massive I mean, awareness I, issue. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of hoping partially that Gary, Gary Dibley's in there because I love Gary to, to, to bits, and he's a really nice guy, and he works for one of those bodies. It, it, it's just, it's such a shock. It would be such a shock to the system to realise just how little you've penetrated this whole. <laughs> this huge number of people really you know and it's only a subset but when you've got a hundred percent no's and a maybe you've got one yes you've got one yes oh we've got one yeah, yes it's me in it there's one you got one in one in 20 that would give us yeah so it's me in it so one, yeah. one in 20 of a very very hobbyist advanced yeah. i was group. i was even wary of asking that question because I thought oh, it may well come up, yes, all the way down. Well, I mean, they, I I'm know. sure they all. I'm sure the majority know Dave Dawn from Vapor Trails TV. I, and I'm sure. I was just trying to prove a point that th th there's, there's one of those said, guys is that is the head of of Vapors uh, in Power in the UK. Uh, oh, we've uh, got a guest popped in. Oh, Mooch! What's up, guys? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm man. Hey, man. We're going to get on to we're going to get onto some battery bits in a in a bit, Mooch, and we're. Anything you want to pipe up with and knock in with, mate? Come on, yeah. come on. I tell you what's um, happened is you, you've struck it pretty good here, actually, Mooch, because one of your bugbears is about to come up, which was one of the things that we kind of. We, oh yeah, it's actually the first thing you've, you've just hit it. Yeah. So we kind of we're kind of following the document. We're doing the bits that are the same, but yeah, just feel free to jump in when you like. Which is this? Which okay. Is Dave, Dave Dawn said. If there is going to be a hundred k shares of a Facebook post of somebody getting his face blown off because he doesn't know how to use them, stop fucking selling them. Those are his exact words. Quote, that is. Right? Quote. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'd say to, I'd say to that, Dave, really, come on. I mean, he's talking about mechs. Let's make that clear first. Um, why not, as a self-appointed leader of our community, Dave, try, don't you try to understand that this is a viral thing? You know, we, the only way, you can't stop things going viral. Why don't you try it and learn how to, how this how this process works and put some good information out there to go viral? You know, oh, mooch has got something venting. <laughs> <laughs> he's like this. You're right, you're right there, mooch. He's not. He's not. He's got his headphones in. He's in. Did it, did it vent, mooch, or did you get there in time? 
I I got there in time. The uh, bleeding stopped in my leg. I'll pull out the uh, strap on later. <laughs> <laughs> so just very quickly, you remember a long time uh, uh, you told the story about when you were doing some testing with some absolutely massive amperage, and and you got all of the bits stuck in your jumper. What was the story again about that? Do you remember? It was like eleven thousand. That's a daily. That's a daily occurrence in the maybe. Mid maybe. Maybe the trauma has, has wiped its, the memory from my mind. <laughs> it got hit um, in the head by part of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, what do you think the hat's for? It's, it's that flattened head that uh, <laughs> got sheared off. Um, oh, by the way, nice T-shirt. That's as high as I can get. Oh, that's Thank a you, one. But no, what I was saying, that, you know, they, these people are, are they're self-appointed leaders of our community, and they're jumping on... You know, we know the media is talking bullshit. We know it's all spin because people want to read about e-cigarettes blowing up. Um, they're telling us it's all mechs. It really isn't. We're going to prove it in a minute. But um, they need to get off the media bandwagon and they need to start doing their research. They need to put real information out there and support the vaping community. Because yeah. um, they're not helping anybody by dividing a community, uh, singling out a specific type of mod. So they, that won't work in my, in my opinion. Um, like, uh, I, I saw about half the video, I believe, with the one year in question. And, uh, mm. uh certainly, uh, here in America, that would go over very badly. And I know there's a, a different community. <laughs> the, the good, uh, the good in, thing is though, as I just proved Mooch, nobody watches it. So it, it, you, it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, that's the, that's the great bit. You see the, um, I'm not touching that line. Uh, the, um, desperately, as I try to make noises with my mouth, try to figure out where I was. Okay, banning mechs. Problem is, for me, it, it avoids the actual problem, but it's more of a Band-Aid solution in, in my mind, because um, we'll talk later. I think there's, yeah. there's an underlying problem that exists for a lot of these things yeah. Yeah. that doesn't involve the type of, mech, uh, type of mod. But also, uh, as soon as you tell a bunch of people, especially if it's a younger crowd who may be attracted to mechs because they see the the uh, trick teams and the comps going, where they'll always use mechs, so they have to start with a mech, they do not take kindly to being told, no, you cannot have that. Which that would nice. mean I will sell my car to buy every mech I can. And somebody just I'll somebody said it exactly this in chat. They were they said it's a really great way of doing anything. Ban it. It really works. They said, I, I mean, look at the war on drugs, and look at and look at like telling kids not to drink underage it, or not smoke. It really works. We know that. We know how brilliant an idea that is. Yeah, it and, really and it, you're you're just sending them to China for fast tech clones. Yes, yeah, um, uh, on things they're going to get the mechs, and I I like to always step back take a look at a bigger picture and go, all right, is, is this a Band-Aid to the symptoms of a problem or is it addressing the cause of the problem? And, and I think we're going to talk about at least what I think is the cause of the problem. But I think it'd be catastrophic if you tried to, and if the media got hold of us calling for a ban on something that's too dangerous for our own community to use, I think would be fatal. Do you remember this community. happened with? Do you remember? Do you remember five pawns and the uh, popcorn lung? That's a tall business. Do you remember that? And we were trying to explain yeah. to people. That was just as I was coming to in. Just shut up. Yeah, just telling people, saying, "Just be quiet. Stop. Stop sharing this fucking story." And then the media got hold of it, <laughs> and we were all getting popcorn lung. It's in everything. It's in the. It's in the batteries. It's in the drip. It's everywhere. There's popcorn lung on everything. It, it, yeah. Mental. The FDA are still using that line. They used that line this week, the popcorn lung thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. But there's no, there's no scientific, um, there's no scientific proof with d diastole and um, popcorn lung at all. Oh yeah, and 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 just the the, and and again, it's it's so important. We're not saying this is safe. It's no. just it's so harm much reduction. safer than what we used to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's harm reduction. Yeah. yeah. So just just going to the just going quickly. Last Go week, for the stats. The, yeah, we kind of last week we kind of went to, to look at the, the the Facebook side of things because um, the vape face man, um, we'll call him, um, the total number of shares was at four hundred four hundred and thirty eight thousand shares, <sighs> and the total number of comments was two hundred and eight thousand comments just on his original article alone. Now, 
a couple of things here, which is that Facebook is designed to spread information at high speed, and the algorithms mean that the posts we, we saw recently will be pushed hard by Facebook when it comes to screenshots. And it's important to realize that there are two varieties. There are Facebook articles and external links to news sites. Now, I think this is what you were touching on, wasn't it, Mucha, but with externals especially, was to, it, to don't post a link to the article in the Daily Mail or the New York Times or the Washington Post or wherever. Don't plain old share it. Yeah, you oh, know. you're thinking of plain old share it. You see, now I've got a question off the back of this. I've got a question off the back of this, which is to do with the ethics side of it and and the fact that if something like this happens, do we use it to educate other people because of its viral nature? Because it's very hard for us to be able to get vaping to become viral. You know, occasionally you'll see somebody on like X Factor who does tricks and does the whole thing, you know, as they do. Um, that's it. But when something comes out of vaping that's viral like this, is there any way of being able to piggyback onto it so that we may not be able to get people outside to be able to understand vaping, but we may be able to educate an awful did you read, lot. Did you read the comments though? Quick, I've got two points just quickly. Did uh, yeah. did you read? Did you have a quick scroll? Um, I had a little bit of a look, and they tend to be. Hey, it, they were. It was like it was. It was the normal. It, it, like if you had a big stamp full of comments, you can stick it on every vaping thing you ever see. It's like poof, all you get is people saying, but do you get people always using text speak like is well better than they smoking and then the next person will say uh they killed my neighbor's cat and then and that that's what that's all you get you know it's just oh we are, we are hell spawn creatures of evil and yeah. doing the work of the devil absolutely mad don't comment on it leave it alone it, it won't do any good leave it and we've <sighs> My argument, when we were running through the script the, the other day, and I said to Craig, and we were talking about this bit and running it through, I said I was going to say what I'm going to say, which is each 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 Facebook group uh, or show or, or YouTube show or whatever, I, I agree there is a case of ethics where you owe a point of the truth. I mean, we, but we do it every single week and explain. Uh, sometimes we've changed the headline. We don't share the story. But we, you, you know, we might use a screenshot uh, on the show where we show it, so that doesn't get them anything, and and we might change the headline. But we explain from the video and what we know or what, what somebody else has pointed out of what happened, actually what happened on the thing. Like that's loose change, you know. He's done that. That's this. This is what happened there. That's what that is. And so we've done our bit. So I, we can hold our hands up and say, no, done. Ethics bit done. Said it. Explain exactly what happened. And people know not to do it. Yeah, and it's, I think everybody owes yeah. that bit. Uh, Craig. Yeah. <clears throat> no, well, if it, if it feels like it's something that you you want your group to be talking about or need your group to talk about, just just take a screen grab, and and put it on. So so it's absolutely. just one absolutely. in one place, and there's no statistical again uh, uh, thing that can be hit against that. Um, yeah. th the reason that the media outlets keep putting this stuff up <coughs> is simply because it gets so many hits. Yeah, th th there's there's no agenda. It's all there's, there's no it's all yeah, there's no there's no big farm or big tobacco government agenda. That the, the yeah. newspaper companies look at hits, e cig stories get hits, so they do another one. It is made for news of, for any media type. It is absolutely made for news. It, well, yeah. I mean, local news here in the States, at least, with car crashes and babies falling out windows and everything like that. Bad news is great news for the companies that provide the news. And, and yeah. I don't want, I had a rant about this that I put up. I don't want anyone to think, certainly for me, and I don't think anybody here, we're not advocating suppressing this information. Just yeah. do a screen capture, post that, and open up the debate for our own internal learning. We can discuss, we can debate, we can rant, we can piss all over it, whatever the hell we want to do, that's okay. But do Think, it to a screen capture. Don't share the original article. Yeah, Let's exactly, keep it exactly. with us. Yeah. Yeah, stop, think, feeding think is, the stop feeding it, the trolls, basically. It, it is helpful yeah. as a vapor to have a, a, a cause for a story, because I, mm -hmm. I got asked this week about, about the face guy by non-vapors, and it was, nice to, it was nice to have an explanation as to what happened. Uh, so I don't think it's a bad thing for people to be talking about. I think it's a bad thing 
for people to be hitting those newspaper websites. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. All right. So the next section, then, shall we do it? Yeah. We yes. Next, we've got next section says accepting Max and all vapors. It's one big happy family. Gustav. Yes. Must, Gustav. And I'm very happy so, using these. Yeah. So you see, and I love Rick. I accept. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I accept. I love Craig, really. even though he's wearing a silly T-shirt. And I have pictures of Craig loving Rick, so it's true. <laughs> I that's how we got him on the show we just sent him them did you give him that job yeah yeah i'd send him um, it was the so, one with the donuts and the one with the chocolate spread oh it was a good one that was yeah it's just it's, it's just there was, diversity there was spray cheese we're all gonna be spray different cheese too. <laughs> yeah so go on craig so, yeah. some, on um own. If a vapor takes the time and effort to inform themselves of the dangers and they follow safe practice, then there's no reason why MEX should, should be vilified. There are many resources out there that highlight the pitfalls and the best ways of staying safe. And if a vapor decides that they don't want to, don't want to bother and want to rush into something without, <coughs> without educating themselves, then there's only so much that we can do. What's important is what is that this applies to all devices, MEC, semi mac or regulated. As the saying goes, nothing is foolproof because fools can be very ingenious. You can so, uh, uh, okay. just to, just to kind of I just want to make a just to, just as an example that this is not right. <clears throat> it's perfectly safe to put petrol in a plastic petrol can, right? With a with a per, you know the cap on the top. Yeah, all agree that's perfectly safe. Yeah, it's not perfectly safe to pour it in your car while smoking, right? Which I've seen people do. Right? Yeah, I'd agree. <laughs> That's exactly the same thing. That's yeah. the same thing. There's no danger with putting petrol in a can. There's no danger with no. We, we don't have petrol. a mech problem. We have an education problem. We have a yeah. We have a fucking That's problem. That probably the sums up this entire document in one line. That's got it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Sorry, sorry. I did interrupt you mid going into the next paragraph. I was waiting for you to pause. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say the same applies. Yeah, the same applies to vapors who vape at 14 watts and 140 watts. Um, there's no difference. The numbers might change, but as long as they're safe and educate themselves, then there's no reason to delight them, dislike them because of the watches they vape at. If a vapor behaves irresponsibly in public, then by all means go ahead and hate on hate on him. But idiots aren't collected at one end of the wattage spectrum. They're everywhere. This yeah. is if somebody vapes inside, um, you know, a shopping centre or a mall over in the states. That's the individual. The individual is an idiot. Not <laughs> everybody who does that, who blows a cloud of an equal size, is an idiot. That's like saying that policemen wear black boots. Therefore, every person who wear, wears black boots is a policeman. It's a logical fallacy to use that kind of thing. So, it's, if somebody's an idiot, it's also a technical fallacy, isn't it? If you, if you, because a, a coil can suddenly start yeah. touching a barrel at fifteen watts or at three hundred watts. It's a short is a short. You know, if if someone suddenly throws an ICR battery instead of an IMR battery in, it doesn't matter whether they're at 20 watts or 200 watts. It's the wrong battery. It could cause problems. Oh, Foo's going. So, <laughs> bye, Foo. Uh, but so you know, it, it doesn't act that it doesn't hold true that the size of your cloud has anything to do with how safe you're being. <laughs> you put chicks dig the big cloud. <laughs> they, do, they do. They love a cloud. Yeah, it is. So don't think, don't think it's hit. And but I wanted to add this on the end of. I I, I think this is kind of misplaced on the, of, on where I've put this in the document. But I think I, I really want to say this, and I, I think this is this is really kind of beating him with a bit of a stick as well. I've got when you finished your bit, I've got a correction that somebody else put it the same out in the chat. But do okay, bit. okay, which is this? Don't you think that it's hypocritical to be taking money? from people at an event like vape expo down in birmingham where a huge majority of the vapors who gave you that money were cloud chasers only to use that money to take the mods back out of their hands the only correct i want to point out is that somebody mentioned in chat that um mr dawn was using a mech on stage but i went back to the video for 2016 and he wasn't yeah we checked we actually checked to see what he was doing. he might have been doing another event that he wasn't at that event but yeah no he's still taking the piss yeah so, you, if you want their money, you you defend them. But it is, hypocr it is hypocrite. It, it, Dave, Dave Dawn has, has 
you know, bless him. He's you dropped a bollock there, Dave. To be honest, you can't single out Mac users. I mean, this is this is a quote from from your video the other day, and he he said, "Take the bloody things off General Stale. Stop fucking selling them, because they are going to cause the industry and us as vapors a problem." Well, oh, this has led to me. I mean, I I've seen I've gone away and I've actually done some research. Okay. And I think that these people who put themselves in these positions where they're supposed to be an authority on it should have done a little bit of homework before they said it. And so I'm talking to anyone who's, who's blaming and done videos and articles saying that mechs are the problem with all these news articles. I'm, call, I'm calling you out on it. Prove me wrong if you want. I'll hold my hands up. But um, I went to the Fergus Mason article. Do a search for Fergus Mason. You'll find the article. Um, Don't bother, uh, honestly. So now what? Uh, <laughs> He, he's, I don't actually disagree with everything he's saying. He isn't saying ban them, but the follow-up comments to the article, he was basically... What, was this the Bye Bye Demex? I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Yeah, 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 that was yeah. the They've had their day, let's let them drift off into the sunset, he was saying. Um, but he's, uh, Which isn't, you know, fair enough. That's his view, but um, it's the follow-up follow um, comments, really. And I said to him, I've seen just as many articles on unregulated mods with un where where unreg unregulated mods are exposed, and he told me I was talking bullshit. So, 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 guess what? I've actually gone away, Fergus. You maybe should have gone and done this before you published it. Um, and I'll put the link up for people to see. But there's a there's a there's a comprehensive list online of all the news articles that have gone on in the, in for many years. But I scrolled through all of 2016, um, and I'll put the link up. And out of all of those, there's about 50, about 50 cases, 50 news articles in last year. Um, and I went through them. Well, when they say what the causes, uh, what devices they think they were using and they were using uh, by, you know, they got facts there. And I went through them all and I counted how many regulated, how many mechs and how many were just batteries going off because of shorting in the pocket. And out of all that 50, there were well, roughly 50. There 55. were 19 regulated mods exploding and there were 16 mechs and 30 batteries so there is your proof he called me out he reckons i couldn't find one i found 19 there just in last year <laughs> you found so, yeah 60 65 is what you found 65 yeah, of which 65 incidents i gave up i've got, got to the begin to the beginning of january last year and i thought i don't need to go any further um so yeah i challenge anyone to show me any more proof that mechs are more dangerous um, and cause more accidents than regulated mods. So go through those figures again, Rick. 19 regulated, 16 mech, and 30 were batteries. Um, that's what they, that's what this, this article decided. Uh, I'd even argue that, that there were less say the article, the article was on uh, esig1.com. And, uh, ESIG yeah, and, and, and props to them, that's a really cool thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Good, yeah. yeah. They've, they've collated all this information and put it all together and and it shows it. I mean, and I can't can't believe Dave Dawn and Fergus Mason or anyone else that puts videos out saying that mechs are the problem haven't gone away and done some hope. They've done these Chinese whispers. They Isn't listen it, to they listen to somebody with. say they're bad, believe it, and then gone away and said they're bad. They've but gone they with the talk. sensationalist headline. That's crazy. They have. So they <laughs> know crazy. the media talks bullshit. They know the media talks rubbish and sensationalizes things. But, but they're going along with it. They are, you know, they're members of, um, Dave Dawn's a member of a team, and um, Fergus is a member of Vapors in Power, that was a leader of Vapors in Power, and there's only, and there's only, uh, what we do our, <clears throat> we have like a script meeting on a Tuesday. If there was something in that script, right, if one of us was going to say something, uh, right, the other three would call them on it. You know, if you said, I'm going to say X, I, I say, I'm going to say, oh, if I just found out the other day, Cherry gives you AIDS. You'd go, whoa, 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 wait, no. Just, John, just go and check that and find this and do that. And then, yep, yeah, you've got no problem yeah, on Thursday. We never go say, on what we... If you say we Cherry gives you this, but you've got, to, you've got to find the backup for that. They've got the same system in place. Why are they not? Why is nobody going, what? Don't, don't say that. Yeah. Yeah, that's wrong. So the, this is bringing... It's, start, it's getting into mooch land almost now, this one is. Right, so heading back into 2015, we can all remember the Smock M80 causing a huge fuss, fuss. And they were terrible. They were really going like, they, that was a big thing, huge across Reddit, you know, picture after picture of Smock M80s going on. 
So why why weren't they called out? Why why weren't regulated devices called out as a whole? What what made it so that what made it so that Macs are so special this time around when regulated mods at that time were relatively new to the market? Surely they you know it's it's that doesn't make any sense at all to call out something that's mature like a Mac when you've already got a history that they could have searched for all of the numbers to work out how many there were. Along comes a new thing like a regulated device and the smock M80 causes fucking havoc. Why didn't they call it out then and say, that's it, regulated mods are dead. We shouldn't be using those. We should be using these other things instead. There's, yeah, no, there's no logic behind that. Well, I, there's, there is a logic, but it's not maybe not an excuse, but I, could, I think I can see the reason why. You know, uh, in 2015, we didn't get the media exposure from the uh, from the 80 incidences that we do from that particular mech that went preposterously viral. Uh, so that naturally draws attention to, hey, stop having that thing within our community versus, you know, anytime the, uh, what, the iStick 50 watt two years ago, two and a half years ago yeah. or so, um, that was, you know, doing its little uh, uh, fireworks display. Uh, you know, none of those went viral. I don't know if it was even noticed yeah. um, by the outside the community. So I can see had, why. I didn't realize the hits they could get. That's why, isn't it? Well, yeah, yeah. I, I think the media has gone, whoa, every, we show this every week. We can yeah. get a, a crap load of hits of people going, oh, my God. You know, but this is the stuff that's led to the FDA's battery safety workshop in April, yep. which is bad because that's the FDA looking for information and they don't look for information because they need reading material. They look for information because they're considering regulations. And there are some nightmare scenarios regarding batteries like protected batteries only that the FDA can use, can, can put into place. And, you know, everyone walks around with a big chunky, you know, 18650, you know, the size of a, a pair of uh, Snickers bars or something like that, because it's in a metal case with protection circuitry, uh, half a bolt of drop um, from the wiring and the protection circuitry and stuff. So there's chain reactions to a lot of this here. And, uh, uh, just, I, you know, if, if... Yeah, go on, go on carry on. I'll, I'll just kind of... Well, I repeat myself about something, so I'm going to shut up. You go ahead. Okay. <laughs> but I, but this also had to, this had something which you've kind of touched upon a little bit, and I, I don't think we've kind of got it in here, which is it kind of makes you wonder where the – and the guys will tell me if it is or it isn't – but it kind of gives you an idea as to where these advocacy groups are getting their information rather than reading – yeah, they're not. Yeah, that's where they're getting it from. It's like what they're doing is they're ignoring all of vaping. So there's this thing which is kind of like a flat sea, and underneath is all of these events taking place. Until something pokes above it, they don't tend to do anything with it. If it doesn't quite reach critical mass, they don't even go near it or discuss it. There's only one person I know who's in uh, um, who's in uh, one of these. Uh, again, I'm going to use the word, and it is incorrect. I'm going to say union type things. Not this. He's not an advocate. He's it, 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 and that's and um, who's uh, got a nose into the high end groups, uh, and is there the biggest high end group in the UK is SV. That's explicitly high end. Is is SV definitely is, and the only person I can think of, no, who who is vocal. You know, not a lurker. Actually, it, it gets involved. Is Gary Dibley? Yeah, yeah, and the hats off. Because he, he gets involved, he's a member of iOS as well, and he gets involved. And he's not afraid to, you know, to, to, to say stuff. They are, the vast majority of them say, day one, say a piece of misinformation and get pounded into the floor and get called a, a cunt and, and leave. Um, because, uh, so therefore, they're not connected. They don't, they're not, they're not in the, the, the scene and yeah. so are not they don't know what they're on about i don't i don't i've, I've not seen them and, and they're more than welcome to come in our group you know as long as they don't they all left they all left last year we did something else. yeah they all left after they ended up spamming our group with loads of yeah, because, because we call them out we call them out and say come on do something get yeah. give us something to get behind you with oh i'll tell you what the major problem we've had is when we've asked them to to share share information with us on stuff uh, send it to us first, and then you can post it. And and then we get, and, and then we go. Well, and they've sent it, and then you say, Nah, I, 
you're not that doesn't say you're doing anything and then they then and then they call you a really rude name and then they leave yeah they get butter don't they when they don't they think they're entitled to something because yeah. they think they're doing some good yeah, and i think getting, they i think they mean to do good i mean that's not are we not putting them you know they think they're doing the right thing do it, they're doing it. bugger all yeah we'll get to we'll get to the okay yeah don't yeah, no worry <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so we've got national officer statistics is behind by some time, but there's still there's still roughly ninety thousand home and leisure injuries caused by thermal damage in one year. Okay, so we're down to six. Is, is that UK statistics? That's UK statistics. I think that was twenty twelve was the last ones that were released. Okay, now, how many of those articles do you actually think were from the UK? Two, three in the la in a year? That one was Idaho, that the exploding face man. Let's say there were nine. It means it's one in 10,000 of these incidents is that. And even okay. then, that's assuming that that goes into those records or, you know, or vice versa. But either way, the numbers are going to be tremendously low out of all of the things. All of the other causes that are above that, you know, such as or somebody smoking a cigarette or any of those kind of things, then they're all going to still be in there. Or somebody setting fire to themselves or kids with boxer matches, you know, those kind of things. So anyway... But when you put exploding battery figures up against the number of devices and batteries already out there, then you're you're most likely below the numbers required for a product recall in any other consumer product on the market. It's just you know it's the any anybody remembers Fight Club with the scene where Edward Norton's walking through and he's describing to somebody the numbers that you need in order to do a product recall, and and it's the fact that you know you've got the cost of all of the insurance or the cost of the payment as long as it is less. Yeah. than what yeah. you'd have to pay in courts and all the other stuff, then you don't recall it. You know, it's yeah. it's one of those cases. So so moving on to batteries, really, then, Craig. I mean, if we're... If, assume, yeah. Let's assume, right? Let's assume that the news accounts for 25% uh, of how many batteries go up. Okay. Right, <laughs> so in America and the UK, which is where the news is coming from, mainly America, uh, that would, if there's 65 last year, there's four times that. That's how many batteries have gone. What's that? 130. 260 batteries blew up last year. Yeah, let's, let's say in total. So to give an idea of the quantity and the, of, and the market that's out there for batteries by November of 2016, this is purely in the UK, by the way, um, the uh, average amount of portable batteries placed on the UK market by scheme members. Now, this is scheme members, remember. These are people that like your main lines, like your Duracells and all those kind of people. This is not the ones with the shady batteries with the rewraps that are coming over from China or Gearbest, you know, Fast Tech and Gearbest, shadily done. Is that uh, between 2014 and 15, 16, there were 30,000 batteries that were bought over here. Okay. That's a fuckload of batteries, and very few of them are going up. Okay. So the growth year on year is almost entirely within the lie ion sector between 2015, 2005 and 2012. In terms of monetary value alone, the lie ion sector has gone up from 1 billion in 2015, uh, 2005 to 5 billion by 2012, and it's expected to pass 10 billion by 2016 at its current, current growth rate. Now you look at the number of batteries that are going up, and let's say you've got all these incidents. How many how many dollars worth of batteries do you think? Well, have, have made there's a quite an easy way to work that out. I mean, if you uh, if you think that there's there's five billion dollars worth of batteries, and they're worth five dollars a piece, let's just say that for argument's sake. There's a billion batteries. A billion a billion lie ion cells out there. Now most of them, yeah. and Mitch will probably say the same kind of thing. They're going to be for electric cars. They're going to be for laptops. They're going to be other things. But. Yeah, okay. uh, there's still going to be a significant percentage of those are going to go towards the user defined market of torches. They're going to well, go to 20 million, vapors. 20 million vapors, probably 25 million vapors in, in America and Europe. Let's say we've all got half a dozen batteries each, or we at least buy half a dozen batteries each a year. Don't yeah. wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. Mooch, your thoughts on kind of in terms of the quantity of batteries out there and the, and the percentage that actually make it onto the news. Well, yeah, I, I never looked at the numbers outside our community because once you just look in our community, then the numbers are so fantastically tilted to one side. I almost never had to go beyond it. Um, you, you've, let's say, you know, let's pick some extremes. You know, 10,000 hobbyist enthusiast vapors in the United States. I think that's very low. Let's pick a preposterously low number, 10,000. 
and we've got, you know, 50 incidents or something like that. What? That's still tiny. Yeah. Um, you know, how, how many tens of thousands of people kill themselves with a car in the United States? Um, so it's, I don't know, that, that, like at least for me, those kind of numbers never even entered, in my, entered into my mind. Because are, 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 you to just say are you so trying to tiny. say ban cars, Mooch? <laughs> yes, but I, I wanted to have my first video on that and not have you steal my fucking thunder. So thank you. <laughs> if you the, mor the mortality thing's crazy. That's you know, it's just you Brits. You know, fuck. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm back to it. Right. I mean, I think we we've, we've honestly got to get some perspective here on the on this problem. People are saying we've got this problem. Um, we have an education and battery problem. Yes, we have. But six, uh, 65 exploding e-cigs in, in, you know, in last year. Um, that, that's that's pretty worldwide. fucking, that's pretty damn reliable stuff. Yeah, it, you know, it, it's a tiny stuff. number, but it, it has a monstrous effect, which, is, yeah. which brings up two things at the exact same time. It's, it's ridiculous to get all excited about it, but we also have to be really crazed excited about it because we need to have practically none. There's not a reason for any of almost any of those to happen. These aren't yeah. spontaneous battery, you know, combustion events. No, um, no. The no aliens, the poltergeist really don't care for batteries because <laughs> the charge messes up with the electric field around them. And, you know, so we're stuck with us. Um, yeah. And it, it's, there's a rant coming on, so I'll let you but finish. Perspective, Sorry. Perspective, yeah. perspective wise, let's put it into perspective about deaths, for instance. Yeah. We know that smoking kills 25 million, million people a year. Um, or five, every mm -hmm. f 5 million people a year. Let's go over a five year period. Um, smoking kills 25 million people. Driving kills 5 million. Plane crashes kills 2,000. Oh, mine's, mine's uh, yeah, mine's one, no, uh, five years. Well, yeah, yeah. But, but I, each one of those deaths, and this is in support of what you're saying, draws very little attention beyond the lives that are absolutely ravaged by that, the friends, family, and other loved ones. But it doesn't become very newsworthy unless there's a, a good fire involved or something like that or terrorism. It's, it's, we've got, you know, each one of our incidents uh, are in its own, as I was saying before, not really a big issue, but because of the impact it can have. They should be addressed, and I lost my goddamn train of thought again. There's 15 million things running We're around get on in to there. The education bit um, in a second, anyway. We're going to get onto the education, and you know. Okay, I'll uh, I'll hold the rants. But now, John don't, was going to say forget, that when all these stats come up as well, that this vaping still has not claimed a life. No, exactly. That's yeah. what we're going to do. So in the smoking seven, was. Yeah, so smoking's 25, they're going for five years, so smoking's 25 million people died, driving is 5 million, plane crashes is 2,000, vending machine deaths, that's vending machines falling forwards onto people is 10.9 people, and vaping is still... I've always wanted those banned. <laughs> yeah, vaping is still at the lovely big number of none. Yeah, none. no, it does, I mean, this all begs the question now from... The advocate's point of view, I'm having a, going back to popping at them a little bit, which is why aren't they going out and, and promoting failure rates and saying, look at how statistically, you know, the minimal the risk is of these things actually happening. Why aren't they pumping this information out constantly? To it say, won't help. But, but at least if somebody sees it just by chance, because it doesn't exist at all. Oh, so I, I, I can see that. I, I'm, yeah, I'm scared I of I'm scared of flying, but airlines constantly pump out how safe it is. And if you check the statistics, they're completely right. You check, I'm terrified of planes, so you can check uh, because I, I quite like uh, statistics, but I don't like statistics like the two thousand people die every five years. So I'll so I remember once checking how many plane movements there are at Heathrow Airport every minute, and there's two. So there's, a movement is a landing. Or take off, right? It's two. There's two every minute, all day, in the average of 24 hours, and nobody died. And so I'm all right with it. <laughs> that's how my brain works. I go, yeah, I'm all right with that. <laughs> yeah, that's that seems fine. That seems fine. So in an hour, there was 120 movements, and nobody died. And in 24 hours, yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, but we don't. Do I, that. I, 
I think it's a lot of, I think people know the numbers, vapors and even non-vapors, I think just have an idea of what the numbers are. But yeah. comparing a vaping incident, which they know really nothing about vaping or the, what can happen, and car crashes and, and smoking deaths and all, they know about those, they're familiar with those, they know the risks, they just accept that it's all fuck crazy dangerous as hell if, you, if it's the other guy and then the other guy is stupid. It's just part of the everyday psyche. Vaping is not. Mm. Vaping is different. It, if anything that becomes different uh, triggers brand new pathways, it, uh, new uh, insecurities, new fears. They don't need it. They don't want it. So why should anyone be hurt by something they don't need or want? They need to fly. They need to drive. Yeah. So they're automatically going to say, yeah, I may die, but I really need to go to the movies tonight. So I'm going to get into my car or, you know, I need to go to the family thing. I'm going to fly. And by that, we can discount a lot of dangers. But, but one of the questions which, for, you know, one of, and all of us have had this question asked to us or, or we've had this statement made back to us when they've seen that we're vaping and we've gone, oh, well, you know, I'm vaping on this. They turn around and go, oh, they're dangerous. It'd be so nice to be able to just turn around and be able to say to people, actually, statistically, it's not. On the off chance that you catch somebody that understands mathematics alone, that is a useful thing to have. Just as a, just as a little bit of a weapon, just to say, actually... You know, your chances are I, I think for, for, for the, a small percentage of people that can work, but I think for the vast majority, the eyes will instantly roll up in the back of their heads and they'll just be like, ah, <laughs> la, 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 la. how much because... fun would it be that if we know the one where a smoker says, Yeah, I don't vape because I've heard about the chemicals, you could actually just turn around and say, Do you know what? There's a 33.333% chance that you'll be killed by that cigarette, <laughs> and at the moment, uh, and Statistically speaking, there's zero chance. There's zero. <laughs> yeah, that one that I'm kind of but, So fuck but, off, but, you it, cunt. And, yeah. and, and nothing we say in the statistics would change his mind. That, that's the problem with statistics. It's only going to change your mind if you've already started to believe in advance. You know, they can change your mind. If you have your mind set up, very few people's minds are changed by statistics. It's because it's, it doesn't deal with any of the emotions. And it's the emotions that are driving our fear our worries, not ours, but the, let's say the world's fears and worries about cigarettes, uh, electronic cigarettes, especially since almost everybody feels they're not necessary. That, yeah. you know, just quit, quote unquote. Um, so I think we're, we're you know, we're, we're just pounding on a wall uh, there with our heads and you know, we're just getting bloody uh, as a result. But I don't, I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. Yeah. But I think that we can't make that something like a, like for me i wouldn't want to see the advocacy groups working i think we need so much work within our community yeah that i wouldn't want to see like uh 10 million dollars used for uh advertising campaigns to educate the public on vaping we, we, but we have i will say much we've kind of just for today's show we're sort of separating advocacy in america and advocacy in the uk just because we've got a perspective on 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 ours and the and good and point because good point these people have just said these things, and you, and your 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 yours haven't. <laughs> so you're ready to We're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna fucking all. tear ours apart. Yeah. <laughs> you've got good at you've got decent advocates in America. We haven't got any here. We have what? <laughs> you got what? <laughs> got, there are some decent advocates. There who are. Get there off are. There are. Yeah. No, yeah, there really are. We haven't, we haven't go got that luxury. Education. Yeah, so the next section is called Education, Education, Education. Keeping it positive. Yes. Right. If advocates, yeah, if advocates are to believe, that, um, then, then they have reach. Um, why not use it just to educate users? Like you say, posters, put, you know, all these things. How many posters have we seen from advocacy groups in shops? I know it's far fewer than the diagrams that Jim has made last year. Um, Everybody, everybody took it upon themselves. The shops took it upon themselves. Users took it upon themselves to go into shops and give the, these these posters to to them to say, "Here, go, put this up." And, and we and we have added a note here, which is if yeah. you're going to right, and people are putting them on Facebook. Uh, users who have got uh, an idea, uh, uh, have got a graphics background, or they've got a Photoshop background, or they're they're they're, they're digital artists. Are, are making these things and people are just nicking them right I, I, and i don't even think the person who made it would mind on their name on it if you're if you're nicking someone's artwork that they've made to keep other people safe <coughs> put put their name on it otherwise it's just there yeah so, it's like mochi stuff 
It's like Mitch's stuff when it gets stolen yeah. and you take his name off it. Stop making it. <laughs> yeah. Stop so, doing it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah that, that was just a point we wanted to make. Take it, Mitch. With what? Oh, well. <laughs> 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 That's true. Yeah, no, we'll, Sorry, carry, we'll uh, carry on. Yeah, carry on with the education. Okay. Yeah, we'll carry on with the education, but which is educate people who okay. want to use Macs. They're not newbie friendly, and steps should be taken. Right? Okay. And a quick list of things that could go wrong. Right. This is probably the best time for you to do the thing that you love doing more than anything else, which is to explain the difference between a vent and thermal runaway. Which I fucked up last week. Okay. Well, it's. I mean, certainly all these incidents. That we're having because very few people report venting because it, it's just kind of embarrassing. No one, no one died or, or nothing blew up. Um, venting, even though it's used as an all encompassing term, uh, certainly for me, and it makes it a lot easier for the community, and I think technically it's also correct, is venting is a simple physical release of excess gas and pressure that builds up in a battery when it's discharged too hard or spectacularly abused um, during charging. The top cap of a battery i left the wrap on there we go um underneath that central top cap on this one it has three legs uh there's what's called a venting disc and those openings between the legs on the top cap is actually where the pressure comes up and is released out yeah think of um a soda can or a beer cans that have the pre-scored tops on them that lets you open it easily um, it'll also rip apart if the can reaches too high a pressure. So if the battery reaches a certain point, that disc just opens up. You may not hear it. You may not even notice it. It may just be a little little film forming, or it may spray out. But that's it. Thermal runaway is a full-on catastrophic destruction of the inside of the cell. Um, <laughs> venting will happen at, oh, it, it can happen anywhere from like 130 Celsius to maybe 170 Celsius, depending on the chemistry of the battery, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, Usually, which is it's pretty hot, you know, when you could boil tea water with a battery. So it usually takes time to build up that high because it takes time for the heat pressure to build up. Uh, and usually you notice way before that. Uh, a battery too hot to hold an enclosed fist is about 60 Celsius. And it's got to go much hotter than that. Then we'll run away at a certain point at around 75 Celsius. Exothermic reactions start in the battery. If that heat is not allowed to flow out, which it will because we're not sitting in at a bath of 75 degree water, we're not insulating it, there is a little bit of heat out. Um, it starts generating more and more heat, feeding itself at a certain point, 270 Celsius, which is oh. fracking hot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, cascading series of exothermic reactions happen, and the battery literally in a fraction of a second can burst. If we're really lucky, the venting disc will open and you'll get three or four rocket engine nozzles firing out between the legs on the battery um, yeah. that we saw. Uh, for some chemistries, the electrolyte, which has a hydrocarbon solvent in it, ignites and you get a fireball to go with the shrapnel <laughs> and the nice. rocket engine. Um, for, depending on how quickly it reached um, the thermal runaway threshold temperature, which is how much current was there in a the short circuit, we'll, we'll talk about. Um, the battery itself can burst. If it can't get rid of its own pressure, the crimp that holds the top part of the battery in, the crimp will come undone and it'll shoot out. Uh, there have been a couple of videos where uh, when a, a mod went, they dropped the mod or the mod would shoot across. It wasn't until the mod hit a wall on the far side of the room that all of a sudden there was an explosion of fireball. That's when the top of the battery came off and it just dumped its contents. Venting can happen from just abuse. Thermal runaway, it's it's got to be a short circuit or a build so low or a power level so high that the battery thinks it's actually in a short circuit situation, a 0.02 build or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, if you heat up, let's say you put a 0.06 build on something, um, you know, or, or Mr. Hall uh, allegedly used that value. That, <laughs> um, I, I, I discharged at 0 0.05, 0 0.04 every single day including the very battery he uses. And I'll do it just five seconds every 30 seconds until you know the thing reaches a uselessly low voltage. Nothing. It, it reached maybe 70, 80 Celsius or something like that. It wasn't even in danger of venting, much less going to run away. Um, 
you don't have to worry about runaway unless you do those short circuits and you've got the you know 0.02s or something like that and the venting could take a very long time but thermal runaway can take literally a second or two there are hot spots inside the battery the just battery doesn't have to you, reach 230. just because i want you to say it mooch because i've said it because we forgot to ask you live when you were on how many vent holes would you need in a mod to stop it exploding if it went into thermal runaway cutting off the half bottom half of the mech <laughs> there we go that is the answer <laughs> that that might and, and, and how many out. vent holes would you need if a bat if a, if a battery vented none there you go there's the that's exactly the answer i wanted so what are vent holes on mods for then boot decoration I, I, I don't know how much research there really has been and it, this is not laying any blame on any any no 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 uh, mod no. manufacturers at all i i don't know how many of them have taken you know the, the roughly what 100 200 batteries it would take you know you probably want five to ten of each of the typical batteries that be used in a mech and you want to bring them each to venting situations and thermal runaway actually we're probably talking three four hundred batteries yeah that's a lot wow. of time and a lot of money yeah. but you know any venting holes are going to help but they also have to be done <clears throat> with the knowledge that for venting just the tiniest bit of air coming around the button yeah. is going to release anything that comes out of it, even if the mod, I th in my opinion, was airtight mm. and the thing vented inside that, your mod's not going to go, no. you know, like that and then maybe burst. It's just going to pressurize the air and then an unbelievable situation, you open it up and hear it all. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. You know, little, yes. when, when you open it up, if, if it was, it was airtight. Not, we we so remembered to ask him in rehearsal hell. once, but forgot to ask him live. Uh, but that, was, the, that was the answer we wanted. Venting holes will always help. They, they can't hurt. But with the mind that, and I was thinking of this with Andrew Hall's situation, because everyone noticed his hands look clean, which to me wasn't a big red flag, because perhaps those are cleaned, or if he was holding it and it shot off in one direction or shot off the other direction, the fireball would be at both ends of the mod and not where his hand was. We don't know. No. But um, something to, to think about also is if you do have venting holes, and if they are not enough to prevent the threads, essentially uh, the mod couple things you can tear the threads off and eject the two ends of the mod or you can actually balloon the mod out from the pressure and the addy just uh drops out because the threads are well, no longer engaged but the problem is those holes are now rocket engine nozzles <laughs> and they can they can actually participate in creating an injury where right. maybe one wasn't before Maybe it's better to have it shoot out both ends, but if your teeth are involved, maybe it's better to have your hand burned from the <laughs> side vents than your teeth broken out. So, but I don't know if it's yeah. really been looked at. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's really been looked at uh, or, or if it ever will or should. Just to move on, should we, should we say how not to do this? Quickly, yeah, a quick we, list of oh, things fan that max, fan can go max. wrong. Do you realize that a little snippet of video of about one and a half seconds is going to be everywhere on the well, let's run some bit. Let's yeah, run through some bits about uh, uh, what can go wrong. Okay, yeah. batteries, um, batteries around the wrong way, including parallel mechs. Oh, I think this might not be a problem. I think it's getting rarer. It was, but I think I think people are becoming much more aware of it. Education, and now and and now they're not doing that as much. Um, yeah. and, and also have, some mods. mods do generally have. Uh, protection in place as well, don't they? So exactly, yeah. And a lot of people just aren't using uh, uh, parallel uh, mods as often. Um, they're going to series mods, so I think there are fewer opportunities. Well, obviously, fewer opportunities there. Reverse battery in the series mod is a non-event. Um, yeah, two reverse yeah. batteries can be a big event, but one reverse one is nothing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, torn and back, torn and damaged wraps. And I would say, and I'm uneducated. You know, Mooch is the expert, so he can tell us on this. But my uneducated guess would be to say that almost all of the news article problems have been damaged battery wraps or the insulator at the top. Not the type of mod, but the, the damage to the battery. Agreed. I think I think this is what, like your statistic, is what, what we end up around 65. Yeah. yeah. Uh, even for the uh, regulated mods, the majority of those events were due to a bad wrap or a missing insulator. Now, maybe yeah. things like putting in a purse maybe, you know, you can get enough stuff going to complete that circuit. But that's not easy to get metal to go from one end of a battery, you know, all the way to the other end. No. 
um, <laughs> with enough stuff or chain, maybe you can do that. But you know, if I have the wrap on, it's a little safer looking. Um, but if, if, the, <laughs> if, the, if, the, if the disc, the washer, the insulator washer, whatever it's the real name is for it, if that's damaged, then you don't. You a single coin could bridge it, couldn't it? Oh yeah. If if I mean, for those who don't know, the um, you've got the center contact, but around that outside ring is the negative. The center contact is obviously the positive. There's a couple millimeters between those. That's all yeah. it takes. It's the tip of anything. And another thing, which someone had brought up to me, which I hadn't get enough thought to, is even if you have, let's say the ring and the wrap around it, if you've got a key coming in at an angle, you can get underneath that insulator ring, even if it's still present. If you've got yeah, something, a little bit of point to it, and you can short out the uh, outside ring, which is negative, and the center well, contact that, is positive. That's one of the things that, you know, we've, we've kind of stuck on the list or, or put a bit further down, which was a perfect example of that, is actually sleds. Because sometimes what you'll find is that the, the sleds, depend sometimes on mods, and these are re-regulated as well, if for whatever reason that little bit of metal that sticks there to contact the battery, if you pull it out positive first, there may be a chance that that little tab might go underneath because you're pulling it out at an angle like that and then flipping it th th like that, which means you're actually putting a pressure onto the tab. And if for whatever reason that tab there is collapsed or bent or in any way damaged at all, that can be the thing that causes a short because yeah, it'll the just bent, go underneath the ring. The bent contact sleds are, are can be a real problem. Uh, the Keystone is a very popular sled for modders. Um, you have to be careful. Your, your wraps have to be in con good condition. Check them. They're, they're not inherently evil. They're not hell spawn. Um, I've seen Beelzebub's vaping store. He does not stock Keystone sleds. You don't <laughs> have to worry about this. Um, but just for any mod, you know, keeping the wraps intact. But as you said, that's further on. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd say, I mean, Matt, and Matt Cully pointed it out um, about, the, about the insulator ring. Um, but it makes absolutely no sense that mechs are more dangerous when just as you know unregulated mods have got a metal piece that the battery goes if that bridges because of your torn wraps and insulator rings it's just it's going to cause a hard shot just like a mech would so mechs are not the problem are they no yeah mechs have a unique failure mode um and that is the hybrid top cap to an atomizer that doesn't have a, a, a pin protruding enough that is unique to mechs. Mm. Um, that quote is a danger for mechs, but I think that's something that, you know, even compared to a year and a half ago, has become much less common. Um, yeah. I think there's a little more education there and stuff like that. It's still going to happen, but, um, you know, there's still some people who, who would want to rub salt in their hands and then hold on to a car battery to see if it's any good. Yeah. It's going to happen no matter what you do with yeah. a car battery I mean, in look, terms of warnings. If we look at, if we look at the, right. the attics that have come out this year, I think you'd be, I mean, hybrids, undoubtedly, yes, they are more dangerous than a, than a floating pin. Yes, they are. But I don't think I've seen an Atty in a year that hasn't got a protruding positive screw. Yeah, um, it, it's not the whipping boy that I, I believe a lot of the community ha, has still makes it, uh, the hybrid top cap. I, I don't think that's where a lot of these accidents are happening. I think it's to do with the wraps. I think it's missing insulators. I think it's turning a battery upside down in the mech, which in some mechs should not be done because it all depends then if you've got a really fat contact on the button and you've got positive down in the mech and that wrap gets damaged you've got a big fat button it just shorts it directly mm. where if it's pointing up and you've got a tiny um pin coming from the atomizer you never it's never going to be wide enough to bridge that even if you have a bare battery um it's not yeah. going to cause a problem up at the top so there are scenarios that you know i don't think we can take the hyper top cast not the whipping boy i think it should be i i think we're overlooking wrap condition it's something we don't look for so i don't even think a lot of people we think about it and uh and i'm ranting again oh this is a dangerous <laughs> show for me I think dangerous thought, show for me one of the other things that i think important was you know we're, we're skipping around a little bit but we're fine with that we'll, we'll get the bits but um yeah i'm on the driver for that so i apologize no 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 it's fine um is like the spring-loaded sub tanks that you kind of saw a while ago which is just treat all of these things exactly the same treat every single atomizer exactly the same there you know that you go through a series of checks which say okay is the pin protruding or not it doesn't matter what you're putting on top of this thing so don't say just because i'm putting you know i've seen it many times where people said oh don't put 
don't put a tank on top of a mech. That's the rule that they've used. There's no sense behind that. And it's kind of it's yeah. too basic an instruction. It's like, no, I've used the tanks on mechs mind. plenty of times. It's simple, yeah, isn't it's it? Like, the simple thing is when you get a new atomizer, understand it. Have a look at the positive pin, get your screwdriver on it, have a fiddle, realize yeah. that it's not going to move, and then you'll be happy to use it on a mech. So, right, we've gone through high grips and all of that kind of um, Don't use an RTA. Yeah, yeah, we've got it. Next bit is remember to use a resistance checker. It isn't there just to tell you a number. I've seen quite a few times where people say, I always do the same build, therefore I don't need to use a resistance checker. It's not there for that purpose. The resistance checker is there to tell you whether you've got a short or not. Oh, no, and it's also because we spoke about this again in the run in the in the sort of uh, script check the other day. Um, but it's complacency, you know, just kind of saying, oh, I always do this, so therefore, button it on, because you can get, I've had stray bits of cut off wire go somewhere, and they fall down the side of the deck, or they do something, and you screw it, screw it onto a, blah, 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 screw it onto an ohms checker, and it comes up at point two, but you know that build is always one point two, but it wasn't because there's a little bit of wires gone down the inside of a leg or something inside a post or something like that can happen just yeah. check why the fuck yeah, i put I, it on a mech to yeah. check yeah well, 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 regulated that, i think well, well, a little thing on that is put the barrel back on the tank or the rda and check again yeah that's yeah. another classic um mistake. i've done that yeah. thrown in a three millimeter when i should have put in a two and a half millimeter and, and uh you put the top on you don't feel it scrape yeah. You know, and I, I do a check in a regulated mod on a, on a DNA 200, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> and, and then you kind of look down inside and go, oh, yeah, I should be watching TV, you know. Um, <laughs> and but, the other one. I find it. The, the other one, I'm sure Mooch will agree with this as well. Uh, the Ohm's readers are not very accurate. Not below 0.1, I wouldn't trust them. No. no. Yeah. So if, and, and, if and again, you know, it, be careful with You know, trusting. some people will say, you know, it's accurate that I'm, 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 you know, look at the specs and uh, okay, but what if you put it up against, you know, the, the difference between yeah. a 0.04 and a 0.02 is a doubling of the current, not a little more, yeah. a doubling. And you've got 20 thousandths of an ohm difference. You know, just how much you tighten an addy, just how much, you know, you can, you can just move that coil around and, and watch it bounce more than that. Um, yeah. There's too many variables that can fundamentally I mean, have or double there's so much resistance in between uh, you know the whole circuit is making up that resistance and if you've even got just a bit of dirt on the 510 and you take it out and it takes a bit of dirt away and put it back on again it's now become a problem so give i think give yourself a little bit of headroom as well sometimes i think yeah. that's an important thing if you're gonna do yeah it. i don't think you know knowing the community I, I think headroom is is uh, is not going to happen for the people who just don't want the headroom. <laughs> yeah. I always I've always worked on I always work on like ten percent. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, I want. but 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 just throw it on a regulated mod at least to check it. I mean, I'm I, I'm hoping the mech users all will have one regulated mod somewhere. I'm sure. Just, you know, yeah. build on the regulated mod, fire it up, check it. Now throw it on the mech. Um, yeah, try and make that, sure it's an accurate an accurate board. Yeah. Try and make sure the board's accurate. It's also, accurate too, yeah. there's, a quick, there's a quick and dirty, I mean, Mo Mooch, you've done so much battery testing. Um, but, you know, there is a simple and easy answer to questions and as to what batteries you should use. And it, I really don't think you need to look any further than the VTC range of batteries. Um, if you're going to go below 0.2, use a 5A. If you're going to go, if you're going to use a regulated mod and you want 3,000 mile, use a VTC 6. I, I agree. For those who uh, want to explore uh, the limits of physics, um, there's the HB, the LG HB series, only because they're the highest rated um, batteries at 30 amps. Those are the um, pink, those are the pink ones, aren't they? The, the HB6, yeah, and then there's uh, the, I've, I've actually forgotten the other colors for the HB4 and the HB2. The HB2 was kind of the runt of the litter, but the the six of the four, um, they're, they're both essentially 30, 32 amp batteries. They they run cold. Um, it's really hard to get those things to do anything bad. Uh, but that's when you're, you know, sub point, you know, if you're super sub ohming, go there. If you're going to, you know, a very classic battery to 25 R, a lot of people super sub ohm with 25 Rs, 0 0.05, 0 0.04. Um, that is not where you should start. 
No, I mean, stick you at, know, start it, at 0.2 and go... I still don't go below 0.15, and I'm happy with that. You know, it, no, it, I don't even do go it, below 0.7. But, <laughs> but I, I think we always have to acknowledge that there are going to be thousands of people out there who will never even dream of going above 0.1 and, and still provide some guidance there. And I'd say, you know, maybe you can use a 25R. Well, you know what? Start with an HB series. See how hot that gets for the way you vape. Maybe a chain vape and a 25R would choke. Um, start with the HB. If you have to, the VTC 5A, you know, 25, 30 amp batteries. And, yeah. and, and you know, if, if you're going to use that coil, I think we have to recognize people will not change what coil they use, uh, either from their own feelings or, or perceived social things that, that say, no, this is the coil you use. And, you know, at least recommend the batteries that will be least likely to get them in the news. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, hard. it's hard to get thermal runaway just from abusing a battery, but you don't want 100 Celsius liquid spraying around the inside of your mod and trashing a battery from venting. It's, it's, you know, it's just a pain in the ass to clean that. It's toxic as yeah. hell, too. Mm. Right. So just before we get on to the ranty bit, um, just uh, we all make mistakes and... I just wanted to point out if it does if anything ever does go wrong just be honest if, if you do post it up somewhere and you say look i've been a twat this is what i went and did this is what happened this is what i think did this that and the other this was the state of the batteries and things like that people are going to be a lot more thankful for that and we can do something then and we can yeah. we can kind of put it down as being every you know you learn your lesson john put his batteries in wrong in his flask and it was kind of like yeah, and you yeah, I've done more than that. I I, I fucked up. Yeah. Uh, how many batteries? How many eighteen six fifties? Five 18650s that I fucked up. I've been vaping nearly five years, and I've broke. I I fucked up five batteries that I know are fucked internally. Um, were two were auto fires where I put a mod a mech down with a sensitive switch that I knew was sensitive. It wasn't locked, and I put it flat down. And it fired for about 45 minutes. <laughs> and another, <laughs> I did that in my pocket once with a mech. I put it in my pocket. The same mech, the same one that did, that did me. And I've done the wrong way round of DNA 20s. I did two. I burnt yeah. out two boards, two batteries. So, yeah. And, and I did the one where I put them, and I burnt out the charging board in the flask. I put them the wrong way around. It happens because yeah. we do it all it the time. It does, yeah. yeah. But the thing is, you're honest about it. That's the point. Well, well, and I use decent batteries. They don't do anything. They're fucked. Yeah. The battery's fucked, and I've learnt my lesson. It's cost me fucking eight quid. But it's that. That's what happened. Yeah. It's fine. But, so anyway, we get to the ranty bit. They I don't do know the ranty bit. Wants to be here for that bit. It's not really a ranty yeah. bit. It's, it's, it's a, f a final is. message. Really. <laughs> the, the, final, the final message to our leaders in in uh, speech box. Uh, so yes, so Dave, I've got, I want to get a message to Dave, Dawn and to uh, Fergus Mason, really, and that is get off the bandwagon, really, um, and try to change things is that instead of adding fuel to the fire. You know, we're a vaping community. We consist of all types of people who vape in different ways. And just because we aren't vaping the way you are uh, doesn't mean that we, sh we shouldn't have a choice and that we should, you should respect those choices. Um there's nothing you could do to stop the media having their fun. So help people understand, in, you know, instead of thinking you have the right to tell people what they should and shouldn't use. Um, you've worked hard to help vaping, but I feel very much you're very, you're very much in your own little clique and, uh, and you can't see outside anymore. Um, I know your heart's in the right place, but come on, open your eyes, embrace all the subcultures. We're all vapors at the end of the day that aren't smoking. So support us all. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it really. Yeah. That's the that's the Dave Dawn oh, and muted. Fergus at Vapors in Power. John's muted. Fucking oh, he, idiot. Yeah. I was just oh. going to say that. I think that shows that shows what Rick's like. He's always willing to give everybody a chance. It's very nice. Yeah. Now it's me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, <laughs> there we go. I'm going to just yeah, love it, John. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> That'll Keep do breath. with a softly, softly approach because they're not that's getting it. These advocates are now actively damaging the vaping industry in the UK by working against it. They have zero influence in the real community. They do not involve themselves with vapors as a whole. And it's time to say, change or you're finished. We all see their posts. We're sent their links. We listen to them talk on stage at events. And what happens? 
We ignore them because they're self-interested, fame-hungry idiots. The time is now. Step up, embrace the clouds, the old ladies who you see five, the Genesis users, and everybody in between, because you've become white noise. They cheer for you at Expo when you wave your arms. Maybe some will buy a T-shirt, but you've become a committee that answers your own questions. The rot has set in, and you need to join Facebook groups and engage with vapors uh, in forums and on Facebook, and embrace the nerd within. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'm dedicating this one to Richard, the vape press Richard. I'm saying that. Um, the point I'd like to raise is that we're seeing time and time again any discussion that doesn't immediately agree with the current advocacy positions is met with hostility and on occasions threats of violence as recently as last week. Okay, this is not acceptable. It really isn't acceptable. That kind of thing isn't. You're an advocate. Stop threatening to punch people in the fucking face, you dicks. You've only got to look at the SJWs that are out there at the moment to see the disdain that people have for them and basically that whole bloody soft liberal left that's fucking things up as we speak. That's what you've become. That's what advocacy is now. It's just this soft fucking underbelly that's just going to get... <laughs> you oh, saw really, more than me. That really I'm, takes I'm, really, I'm fucked off with them because they, all they just keep on doing is you go and have a discussion with... Somebody turned around to me the other day and I, I asked them for some evidence. The first thing they said to me is, oh, you sound like Big Pharma. <laughs> Then get a fucking grip of yourselves. If, if you've got the statistics or you're making these arguments, you should have it there at hand. You should just turn around, be nice, present it in a sensible fashion. It's not some kind... You don't get a fucking cookie for getting blocked on fucking Twitter because somebody disagreed with you. If you go to the manager of some big pharma company or big tobacco or the government and start getting into a shit-slinging contest with them, nobody wins. Go and watch a Jordan Peterson video on about... When two people work through things and have a conversation where they change ex uh, change, exchange ideas, both people grow from it. Long ago. It's calling Vapor Stingy, for instance. That was a dickish move. It really was. Well, he no, called, no, he's, no one read he it. also <laughs> called me a bullshitter on his thread the other day. And it was like, I'm only <laughs> questioning where you're getting this information from. And I hope I've proved and I'll post the links up. Have a look at them. Go and make your own opinion. Tell me if, if you think I'm wrong. But, yeah, he's a bit of a bully boy, I think. Yeah, if you want, to, if you want people to be able to, to like you and to, and to understand and to follow you and do stuff, lead by example. Just do that. Maintain focus. Get the information across in a nice way. If somebody makes an idiot of themselves, accept it. You don't see, you don't see the smart politicians out there answer to every single post that goes up on on Twitter, for instance. They just don't do it. What they do is they just ignore it and move on. They've got an actual plan of what they want to do at that moment in time rather than this knee-jerk reaction stuff. I really, really, really want to help. We really do, but you're making it so fucking hard for us to lie before we've got to help in you. Yeah, because our point is that we're on the side of vapors. Yes. We're and, and you should be on the same side. We want to help. We really want to help, but you've just made it fucking impossible. So anyway. <laughs> and stop throwing it to punch us. It's getting really boring. God damn it. Anyway, Richard's got the final fucking nail in the coffin. <laughs> Take a bow, Craig. Nice, Craig. Well done, Craig. Well said. Um, okay. I, I, just want, I just want to finally pick up on this and maybe some, maybe some take home for, for any advocates watching. Um, the... Advocacyproject.org.uk, a government site explaining what an advocate is. And uh, they have a page on there, what does an advocate do? And it has what an advocate can, bullet points, and what an advocate cannot. Okay, what an advocate can. Support you to know your rights so you receive fair and equal treatment and access services that meet your needs. Support you to understand information so you can consider all your options and make an informed decision. Support you to have your, your voice heard so you can live the life you choose. An advocate cannot give you advice. We will only give you information. Make choices for people. We will only support you to make your own choices. Judge you. We will respect your decisions. Take another person's side. We only support you to speak up about what you want. Um, 
for for whatever reason, certainly in this country, <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> for whatever reason, in this country, certainly it, it's got so so twisted as to what a vaping advocate is. And if if you just go back to what the government literally state an advocate is, you take a step back, read that, and start again. Start again. You're here to help to inform us the rules, our rights, and be our voice. Yes. You can't advise. Yeah. You can't comment. You're not here to state your own personal opinions. You're here to advocate. And if you really want to do that, follow those guidelines. Well said, Mike. That's fun. That is it. And perfect. I think. Yeah. I think we're fucking two hours and ten minutes in. I think we'll do. That'll do. That's yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah, well, what we'll do is, I'm sure Rick, we'll leave it to Rick to decide on whether he, he's got a big chunk afterwards, but we'll leave it up to him as to what he wants to do with it, but we'll, yeah. No, we'll I talk. think I've, I think I've, I've, I won't bother drawing more attention to, to yeah. Fergus Mason, but he was pretty rude to me on his, on his article, so I'll post a link up there, go and have a look and see if, if I, if I was out of line, it got into a bit of mudslinging, but I don't like being called a bullshitter when I'm not, so... Uh, but honestly, I'm not going to draw more attention to it. But They're I'll calling the in chat for Mod Showcase. Have you got one? <laughs> I haven't got one. Okay, hello. We'll play out with some music. All right. We'll play out with some music. Okay, and we'll be back, and I promise we'll be back to our normal silly bastardness next week. Uh, we were just trying to prove a point this week. Uh, and we don't ever do drama and shit, but we, we were just trying to prove a point this week. And I think we've proved it. And that's it. Yes. End. And that point. The point is, we've got game if yeah. we need it. Yeah, we can. We, we can summarise though. I think. Go summarise very quickly. Go on, Richard. More, you're the voice on. of reason. Summarise. More, more. There are more casualties to regulated mods than uh, mechanical mods. So the recent news stories have been outrageous. Um. There are even more than both of those combined, just pure battery safety issues. Literally, batteries on their own uh, cause more incidents. And advocates need to not jump on the bandwagon, not jump jump on the media's coattails and ride it. They need to go back and have a look at what advocates need to be. Perfect. Perfect. So on that bombshell, we'll say goodnight. Thanks for coming on, Mooch. Thank you ever so much for... Yes. I just Thanks for so guys. Yeah, yeah I just want to say we've we've kind of hassled Mooch, and he, I'm sure over this last week or so or, or longer, he's been pulled left, right, and centre by all of this shit because he will have been. Have you got a quote from Mooch? <laughs> from everybody. So um, we just want to say thanks for everything that you do as well, Mooch. It's fucking appreciated at times like this. It really is, mate. So really thanks, for having thank on. I'm gonna have Mooch. a drink beforehand next time, so I'm not so random. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll catch you soon, Mooch. Thanks, buddy. All right, guys. And yeah, this has been the Ideal Home Show. Thanks for watching. We will catch all of you lovely people next week at thir Bye. on Thursday at nine o'clock. Bye. 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 Bye for now.